Hey everyone, it's Erin from Erin Bun Paints. Welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you step by step how to recreate the beautiful painting beside me. It's called Courage. Today I'll be using four of my usual paint colors. I have red, yellow, phthalo blue, and white. And I just used two paintbrushes today. I have the medium round brush and the small round brush. As usual, this footage was taken from a recent live stream of mine. If you want to tune in live next time so that you're painting right along with me and all the others who join in live as well, you've got two options. You can check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Paints. That's where I stream both the step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials as well as just everyday painting content throughout the week. Or you can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paints. That's where I stream just the step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials through Facebook Live. Otherwise, if you're looking for my other painting tutorial designs, you can find those on Instagram, instagram.com slash Paints. And if you're looking for the footage from all of my past tutorials, they're all right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Paints. You're already here. All right, let's get painting. Enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so here's the line again. So what I'm gonna do first, everybody, is I'm going to do a very, very rough sketch of the lion. Uh, we do this in a very, very light color so that it's easy to cover up. I personally used, I believe it was a light pink. I could be wrong, but I think it was a light pink. And you can see there's no real like light pink outline visible here. We end up covering it all up. So that's what we're gonna do. I would recommend using the medium round brush. Again, if you saw my intro, I said we probably don't need the large flat brush. I really only use this one for almost all of the painting. I maybe used a tiny brush. Thanks Cat Crafty for the follow. Um, a sweet as well and incredible gnome. Um, yeah, I mostly use this one. I also switched over to a very teeny tiny brush here and there. Um, so just so you know that pretty much only the two, but mostly this one. So I'm going to use this one to do a nice quick little outline of the line. I'll lead it through, lead it through with you um, so that you can follow along, of course. So let's take that brush. You can go to your plate, your plate of paints. Maybe they're poured, maybe they're not. That's okay either way. I usually pour as I go. And I'm just going to pour lots of white with a little bit of red. Lots of white, little bit of red. Where do you hang all these paintings, says love. Um, I actually gave a whack of them away recently. Um, I did a free giveaway in my local city and uh, just gave them out for free at the park. So right now they're not really hung up. They're all in other people's homes, perhaps hung up. So I hope that's the case. I think they are. A lot of people really seem to enjoy that. So that was good. I did, Christy. Yeah, how would that go? Just watching, no worries, Elaine, and cheers, Heather. But yeah, a lot of them are just kind of stacked up around my apartment right now. I'd love to hang up some though. All right, so let's start here. So I'm gonna need to like move in front of my canvas a little bit just so I can see proportions or else they're gonna be very messed up. Um, but let's start with just the general outline. So you can see I wanted to make my lion uh, very like big on the canvas. So what I did is I started kind of top middle. I brought down a curve and another curve kind of falls off the sides. And then what I do is I close up that bottom middle. So let's start with that. You can find the top middle of your canvas. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna actually use the camera to figure it out right around there. So I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap so that I have some room for a mane and some ears. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a nice curve down to the left and down to the right. Trying to make it even, as even as I can. Uh, the other great thing about doing this with a light color to begin with is that you can change things up as you go. So you just saw a great example of that. I went a little too kind of far over just to the right. Instead, I want to go down to the right, you know, so you can do that. Change it up as you go whenever you like. Just starting with those two. Bev, you're getting lots of interruptions. I'm, I'm sorry, Bev. Bev, uh, Facebook isn't working super well right now. If you'd like to check me out on Twitch, I've pinned my Twitch link there. You're welcome to try there. Um, I'm gonna try keep, to keep streaming on both though, just so I'm not shutting down one, you know? But I'm sorry it's causing interruptions. I don't know if it's on my end, but I don't think it is. I'm sorry. Kim, welcome in, welcome in. Hype, right? Uh, this is a size six technically, a size six, but really any medium size will do. Maureen, thanks to the follow. ARP, thanks to the follow. Crafty, I believe, I think. Cool. Medium round, yes. Right, Heather? I know, it's pretty crazy. It's exciting, it's very exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna start to close up the bottom now. So again, this is kind of the bottom of the main, kind of like where the neck kind of would be. So we're leaving a little bit of a gap and then we're going to come 
down to the right, down to the left. You can kind of curve those. I made them a little straight. Again, I'm going to be fixing this as I go because it's very hard to paint from the side. <laughs> it's very hard for me to tell proportions. I might have to do this every now and then to keep things a little more even. So just excuse me as I do that here and there with this painting. Mainly what I'm trying to do again, keep it kind of rounded coming to the bottom. So you can see the basic head shape coming together again as a reminder. And this is what we have very basic to begin. Uh, it was bad all weekend. Oh, I'm sorry. Your voice is distorted. It might be when I move sushi. I'll try my best to move the mic as I go. I'm trying, Groki. I'm trying. Pretty much a heart shape. Yeah, it's a good way to put it, Kathy. Is it better now, sushi? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, well, I have it slightly different, but I try and move it actually closer to me for tutorials. I'm sorry if it's not quite working. I'm going to try my best to move it with, uh, with me as I go. Thanks. Cool. Okay. All right. So now what I do is I just map out a few of the main parts of the lion. So main parts, in my opinion, include the ears. We have the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And I will map out kind of where, um, the head separates from the main as well. So I'll go just nice and slow with all those, just kind of warning you about what's up here. So I'm using that same brush with that nice light pink. Let's do the ears first. Those are nice and easy. We're just going to put one ear very close to the top left corner, one ear close to the top right. They're just nice and rounded. They're kind of like half circles, kind of like Mickey Mouse ears, just not as big, not as big for sure. So let's go about here. One little ear and then try your best to make it about even in terms of how far down the head it is. Again, I'm looking in the camera. This is quite the challenge for me. And it can be very rough. Again, if it's not looking exact, that's totally fine. This is all rough. And then we'll be covering it as we go. Okay, thank you guys for confirming the sound. Oh, Facebook though, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure, Sushi. I'm very sorry. Yep, Kaz is right. Sometimes that helps. I'm glad your dad loved it. Penny will always bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. Very cute, Bob. I don't think I've heard that quote before. It's a good one. Okay, so we have the two ears. Let's move back here. Let's uh, let's kind of carve out the, the face shape next, and then we can put all the things in there. Facebook, by the way, I haven't seen comments in three minutes. I hope it's not an error on Facebook, but just so you know, if anyone's commenting, I'm not missing them. I'm not seeing them so far. So just so you know, maybe they'll come up. Um, so yes, carving out the face as opposed to the main. So I'm gonna start, you can see kind of like just below the ear. So you can start on either side, just below the ear. And I'll teach you kind of just this little curve in, out, down, up, out, and back in, okay? Let me just move this over, make sure you can hear me still. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go right below the ear here. So anywhere below the ear to start. I'm curving out, curving in, down. So I'll start just like that, just so you can get a basic shape on that first side there. So again, that was, oops, I'm grabbing blue by accident. That's no, no big deal though. If you're using a different color other than light pink, as long as it's a pastel color, you're fine. Out, in, down over. And of course, the other side is the exact same. You can either carry it all the way up or you can start over here and meet downwards. I'll just kind of carry it up here. Out, in, and you're ending anywhere just below that ear over there. Basic shapes to begin. Basic shapes. I'm evening this out, trying to get them about the same, same shape there. Cool. Do, do, do. Yeah, Barb, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're uh, over on the other platform, though. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sushi. I don't know what's up then. It's like a light bulb. Kathy, you're good at calling out these shapes for sure. Okay. So you've got the lion face shape on. So again, hopefully you're seeing kind of the mane versus the face. 
Let's do some features. We have like the eyes, the nose, the little mouth. Let's start with the eyes. I love the eyes. So the eyes I describe as kind of like almond shapes. Hope you like that one, Kathy. I think they're little almonds. So they're kind of like almonds, just kind of tilted inwards. So you can see they're angled. We have one angled this way, one angled the other way. Um, I would say they're on, I guess, just on the outside of the ears. So you want to pull a little further in from the ears. Um, not too close together. If you want a measurement, it's about a hand. It's about a hand. I know everyone's hands are different sizes, but if you want to use about five fingers, that's about that's about the distance between the eyes. You don't want them too close. You don't want them super far. I think a hand is a good reference there. So again, almond shapes, let's do it. Carolyn, hello on Facebook, I see you, hello. So almond shapes, so an almond has two points and they kind of curve into one another, right? So it curves up and down, down and up. So there's one. I could move that maybe a little closer in, but I'll just see here. If I want to use again my hand as a measurement, I'll do about there. Give a little marking for myself. Something like that. And once you put on all the features, you'll have the ability to kind of see how everything is working together, right? If you feel like something's a little too wide set or you need to change up something, you'll have the opportunity to do that. But again, we don't need it to be perfect because we're just going to be adding lots of different brush strokes on top anyway. So it all works out. I love almond. Excellent. I'm so glad, Kathy. <laughs> So again, you can see it perhaps coming together a little bit. And again, I could center these a little more. Maybe I'll fix that in a minute though. Let's do the nose area. So the nose, we have two kind of things going on. I did like to sketch out where the bridge of the nose is. So kind of the eyes leading down like this. And then we have the nose shape, which I would describe as yet another kind of heart. It's kind of like a, a, a wide set heart. So it's not super rounded, just a little wider here. So let's do the bridge first and that'll lead us to the actual nose, okay? So I'm looking at the two inside corners of the eyes of the almonds. And I'm going to bring two lines just coming down and out, down and out. Oop, see, I need to, I need to just look like this. This will be much better for me. There we go. So just uh, appreciate your patience as I move this in and out so I can really see what's going on here. It's for the sake of the painting being in proportion. Of course, of course. And then for the nose itself, again, I described that as a nice wide set heart, okay? So rather than a very rounded kind of tall heart, it's more wide set. So if you want to just choose the middle, for example, and then go from there and trying to get the middle right around there, very good. And then instead of doing again, a heart like very tall like this, I'm instead going to come over very quickly. So making it a little more horizontal and then it comes down to a little point. So horizontal heart down to a point. There we are. Almost lines up with the inner ear. Yeah, I was saying that too. It's almost there. I think my eyes could actually be a little closer together, but I'll, I'll fiddle with this in a second and get it a little more to what I was ex expecting. But yeah, almost to that inner ear. That's a good point for sure. Terrible mind. Oh, sorry to hear spuds. And then we have the mouth. So again, the mouth is just, um, I'll give you another reminder here. Just kind of some straight lines. We have a straight line coming down like this, and then we have two angles coming out to about the uh, outside of the face shape here. He looks very stern. He looks very serious, a serious lion. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit, just a small little vertical line. And then we do a slightly angled line to the left, slightly angled to the right. So at this point, you can kind of look over your line. If anything needs adjusting, you can adjust. Maybe what I'll do is I'll try my best to keep both of these here. You can see a little comparison between the two. If you think anything looks off, you can change yours up a little bit. I'm going to have a quick look at mine, maybe from the front and see if I can adjust anything. Uh, for example, I'm kind of looking at mine and I think my mouth is a little high. 
It looks like my chin is quite large. <laughs> got quite a large chin on my uh, lion. So I'm gonna just shift things down a little bit. Again, you can do whatever you need to as well because this is all gonna be covered up. So that's the beauty of it. You can really plan ahead and uh, really perfect it as much or as little as you want. You can always just kind of change things as we add the color. So completely up to you. Uh, Adissimo, thanks for the follow. Welcome in, welcome in. So here I go. I'm just gonna, again, move my mouth down a little bit. So my, my sketch here is gonna look a little botched for a second because it's gonna be quite, you know, we're gonna be seeing double a little bit, but as long as you know what you want on your line and as long as I know what I wanna do, then we're good to go. In fact, I might actually just use a brighter color so I know exactly what my actual outline is here. So again, take some time if you need to go in and change anything, now is a good time to do it just so you can show yourself exactly where you're going with all of your colors later on. Yeah, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And I think the eyes are pretty good. Maybe I'll move them in just a touch. I wish I could see all of your paintings and help you, but I can't. So if anyone has any quick questions, any tips they need, just let me know. I can help you, of course, in the chat. I do my best to read all comments as I do this. So if you're having any issues, just please let me know. If you need me to repeat anything, always let me know as well. See, I think that looks a little better. I just shifted everything down just a touch. I might even still make the, the chin just a little bit smaller. And again, you are welcome to change this as you go too. So even as you're adding all of your fur, all of your texture on the painting, you can always use that and kind of change things as you go. I might even bring this in a little bit more. Anything that helps you, you can do that now. If you want to map out more things, you are welcome to as well. I'll just give a minute or two if you're still adjusting, okay? I'll keep this up. You can have a look. Might even adjust the mane. I'm just going crazy with my adjustments today. And you can use my technique of using a brighter color. The brighter color kind of solidifies a little bit more what you want so that you're not confused by all of your pastel lines. Even brighter colors will cover up pretty easily as long as you're not caking it on the canvas. So there you go. Oh yeah, sorry Sushi that it's not working. No problem though, you can watch on YouTube. No worries at all. Streaming here is fine, because I am hearing a lot of people saying the voice is okay, so I don't want to keep messing with the microphone, unfortunately. Um, it might be internet connection, but I'm not sure. Again, you're welcome to uh, view it on YouTube. No worries, no worries. Looks nice. Thank you, thank you. So this is a tutorial in case you didn't know, Adissimo. I'm teaching people how to paint step by step. We've got people following along. Some are just staying to watch, which is cool. So yeah, if I can help you with anything, just let me know. And I'm trying to curve these a little more. I feel like it's a little, little straight. I could fiddle with this all day and I'm sure all of you could too. <laughs> Sam, welcome in. I'm so glad you came when I'm not in the middle of ending my stream. It's so good. Yeah, pencil would be good too. Uh, Lori is suggesting using a pencil for the uh, outline. That's great. Here's looks like a bear. Hmm, what would a bear be compared to line? Maybe just, um, I guess the mane would be the big difference, right? So maybe you're kind of seeing, cause I think this kind of looks like a bear in here as well. So I would say you're on the right track if you're looking like a bear. It's really just the mane kind of around it, right? So I think you're fine. I think you're good. Thanks, Barb. Sam, thank you for the cheer of a hundred biddies. Thank you so much. Yep, chalk is a good idea too, Mish, with the chalk. Very good. Right? You could like purposely do a bear. That would be very cool. You're welcome, Rosie. Yeah, Charlene, I saw your peacocks. I definitely have that one written down too, so maybe soon. Maybe this style in a peacock, right? Right? Love your paint. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. That's a good motto, Sri Lux. Welcome in, by the way. Grandma, thanks for the follow on Twitch a little earlier there. All right, how are we feeling? Again, if there's any uh, any questions about the shape or anything, let me know. You can see mine is very rough compared to what I have a little cleaner over here. So if you're feeling like yours is maybe a little bit rough or maybe a tiny bit off, as long as you get the basics of where things are, that's really all we're going for right now. 
All good. Perfect, Mish. Perfect. All right. So if you have your shape down, uh, what I would recommend is we can start with the background. When I was making this line, I technically didn't start with the background. I kind of flipped between a few things, but I know that starting with the background is going to be quite beneficial for us. Zaya, mine looks like the Pink Panther. <laughs> mine kind of does too. <laughs> We're all on the right track if we have Pink Panthers. There we go. Yeah, very shapely face. That's what he has, kind of like that big chin area and everything too. It's as if you took away the mane, it's very Pink Panther. I see him right there, right there. It's so true, it's so true. Awesome, Kathy, I'm glad you're seeing it. Yay! All right, so I'm gonna take this down. Um, well, I'll talk about it one more time first. So for my background, I chose nice blues, purples, and a little bit of white sprinkled in just for the sake of breaking up some more colors. So you can see I dotted in some white. There's also some purples and blues. You can choose any background you want. Like I said earlier, you can change any colors you want. I will teach you when we get to the line in terms of what um, I guess my recommendations are when you're choosing colors and where you're placing them. But for now, background's pretty easy to change up to whatever you want. I use chalk till it's okay, then paint over it. Yeah, Heather, that's a great idea. I know Mish just said that too. Chalk is a great idea. White or colored, because you just rub it away whenever you're ready. So I'm gonna keep using the medium round brush. You can wash it off whenever you're ready if you wanna start a little cleaner. I do, because I'm switching colors. And I'm gonna start with some blue. I'm gonna do blue, then I'll do purple, and then I'll do white on top. So you can go to your plate, you can mix blue, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in mine. I like my blue just a tiny bit brighter. So for those curious, I'm using phthalo blue. So it does come out pretty dark from the bottle, but if you mix even a touch of white in there, it's gonna be nice and bright. So I'm gonna mix just a little bit of white in there just to brighten up a touch. Again, this is very personal preference though. I would make a blue that you like. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of white. I'm gonna mix a lot of blue on top. So you can see it brightens it just a touch. This versus that. That's my original, that's my new. Love it, thank you, Lori, thank you. Lori on Facebook, we got a couple Lori's now. Yes, Pink Panther, there we go. We got some fans of the Pink Panther idea. I think it's perfect. Aaron Ross, thank you, Sam, I could never. Bob Ross is untouchable. What about ultramarine? That'll work, Lydia. Um, it'll give you a little bit of a different tone of blue, but it totally works for what we're doing. All right, so this is where I'm gonna really explain kind of the technique that I use throughout the whole painting, okay? So I'll go maybe a little quicker as I do the other steps, but for this step, I'm gonna go nice and slow so you can really see what I'm doing to get um, this impressionistic look. This is like an impressionistic look, which means we have lots of small little brush strokes. When put all together, they create one large object, which is our lion. Design, thanks for the follow. Lady, thanks for the follow. Shrelax, thanks for the follow. So I'm just using the medium round brush with my blue. And I'm gonna use kind of the tip of the brush here. Um, I like to angle my brush a little bit onto the canvas like this. So rather than 90 degrees, rather than completely flat, I do about 45 either um, this way or the other way, depending on which way I'm stroking. If I'm stroking up, I kind of angle it up like this and I stroke like that. If I'm stroking down, it'll be angled down and I'll stroke like this. Uh, for the background strokes, what I try and do is I kind of bring them, uh, I would say like kind of shaping the lion. So rather than just going randomly like this, I instead kind of look at the shape of the line and I want to follow the shape. Okay, so I'm going to kind of follow around the ears, for example, down like this. I follow, you know, around the mane like this. They're all kind of following just the flow of the line. Okay, so they're all kind of coming up, out, around, down, all of the above. So you can see again what I'm doing, just using the tip of the brush, that angle here, just pressing it on the canvas, moving it slightly, removing it so that I get all these small little brush strokes. It's going to look funny. It's going to look funny at the start. It's going to look funny with the next layer. It's usually when you have all your layers on and kind of molding together that it starts to look right or it starts to look like the reference that you're trying to go for. So don't worry if you feel like it looks a little scattered. It looks a little funny with the first color. Once we add the purple and then once we add the white on top, it's all gonna come together into that impressionistic look. So patience is key for here. So as I mentioned, I'm just gonna go around you're kind of following just the flow. It sounds kind of weird, follow the flow of the lion, but you are, you're kind of just circling around it, following wherever things are going. And you're putting on all these little individual brush strokes. 
you can overlap them. You can allow them to touch. They don't need to physically distance these strokes. They can all be hanging out very close together if you want. But what you want to avoid is putting them all on top of each other like that. Because then they kind of look like one big blob, right? You instead want to just do small brush strokes all very close together. So you'll have some gaps, you'll have some touching, all of that is fine. The other recommendation I have is I would reload your brush often, often. Um, if you start to brush 10 different brush strokes, 15, 20, here's what happens. See all these? These are kind of messy and dry. It's because there wasn't a lot of paint on my canvas versus these ones are nice and clean. So if you want nice clean brush strokes, very bold, um, you want to be reloading your brush every few strokes. I know it's going to be a lot to keep grabbing the paint, but it's totally worth it if you want this clean look here. So I do a few, grab a little paint, do a few more, grab a little paint, go over top of some if you feel like they look kind of rough and dry. Much better, much better, okay? So I'm just gonna work on my background a bit. I'm just going to keep applying in the exact same way. You can watch as I go. You can try yourself, of course, at this point. And again, use these strokes to continue to shape up your line. If you need to cover up any pink, you can go right on top, just as you see me doing. You can use this to shape up anything you'd like to. I'm just gonna have a look at this so I can do that myself, actually. I think I wanna shape up like that. And just adding away, adding anywhere in that background to start to cover it up. Um, I'm sure there will be a question of how much to do. Uh, I would just say, um, have a look at what I'm doing here and then you can kind of judge for yourself in terms of how much. So again, I am adding quite a few. There's lots of these here. And I would say the gaps are starting to become minimal already, even though we have two more colors to add. I'm adding lots of strokes right now. So I'm kind of covering my bases, if you will. And then that way I can add these other strokes just a little more aimlessly and I'm not as worried about uh, gaps. Okay. Uh, I like your palette. What are you using and what was it originally? Kathy. Yes, this is the Volcano Plate. This is nicknamed the Volcano Plate. Okay. Uh, the Volcano Plate is the same paper plate I have been using for about five years straight at this point. Uh, it is not required to use a Volcano Plate when painting. But um, I do, and it was to save on throwing out plates, essentially. It was to save on just doing a painting and then throwing out a plate and using a new one, right? Um, but yeah, this is five years of painting. Uh, all of this, or a large chunk of it is all very dry. I have my wet paints on top. And as you can see, it's just kind of piled up and formed into a volcano shape. So that's how it earned its nickname, the Volcano Plate. That's the story. I continue to paint on it despite it being a very, very heavy plate. It's just for fun. <laughs> and people have grown to love the volcano plate. I've had viewers who say they are starting their own volcano plates. And that is very exciting to me that more volcano plates may exist in the world. So that's that. Um, if you're on, you are on Twitch right now, we, sh we actually have a volcano plate emote. There it is, Sam just used it. That's the volcano plate, it's saying hype because the volcano plate is very hype. It's very excited. Does it matter what brand I use for the painting? It does not candy red. Um, I use the Start Academic Acrylic from Curry's Art Store, which I know is um, uh, specific to Canada, but really any brand will do. My brand is a academic acrylic, which means it's a very basic brand. It's nothing uh, special, it's nothing expensive. It's one of the best value brands out there actually. So uh, yeah, just so you know that, you don't need to get fancy and spend a lot of money here. <laughs> I use my very basic materials over and over again for you. I'm sure as you're stroking too, you'll notice the, the uh, more pressure you use, the larger the stroke will be. It'll be thicker. The less pressure you use, the thinner it will be. So just kind of play around with that. You can do lots of different ones. They don't all need to be the same. Wow, says Brandon, I'm glad you're liking it. Hi from Sarnia. Ruth, what is your paint palette made of? Yes, I just explained the volcano plate. I'm sure there was maybe a little bit of a delay in your comment there, but if you need any more info, let me know. It's made out of acrylic paint, five years of acrylic paint, all on this baby right here. <laughs> there you go. 
Just gonna finish up this uh, blue and then I'm gonna catch up on comments. I know I've missed a couple so far. So that's about as much as I add. So if you wanted a little bit of an idea of how much I have, I'm just gonna close up this area here. That's about how much you can see. It's, uh, it's quite filled up, I would say, with blue. Not a whole lot of gaps left over. So again, I, I call it covering my bases. I'm not leaving a whole lot of gaps so that I'm not worried about it later. So again, I'm just using this to line up everything a little nicer. That's a little better. See, I chopped that up. It's a little more even. Okay, so I'll give everybody a minute or two if you're still working on your blue and then we can move on to a new color. Debbie, you made it. Welcome in, welcome in. Kevin Chance, two percent. Oh, Liza, what's up? Let, or Lisa, excuse me, let me know what's up and maybe I can help you. It is, it is, Kathy. Yeah, pointillism or I, I think it's yeah, impressionistic. Both of those work for sure. Life, you're here. This is number uh, the six. Mary, it's number six. Oh, thank you, Lisa. It's true, Lydia. This is my home workout. Gym's just opened up where I live, but I don't need to go because I got volcano play. Oh, yeah. Wee, life. How are you feeling today? Mod love. Lee, I'm glad you're enjoying Twitch. Thank you. Oh, you did? Amazing! Anna, send it to me. If you feel like it. Socks, thank you so much. I love your name, by the way. Socks and Sandals. Amazing. Yeah, Lisa, if I can help you, let me know. Uh, you might be able to describe what's looking funny about it, if it's the face, if it's the mane, etc. Maybe I can help, but otherwise, just be loose with it. Again, there's still lots of opportunity to change things. If something specific is looking funny, you can always go back and uh, fix it up as you like, you know? Luke, welcome in. Hello, hello. And hello, life. Again, are you feeling okay today? Are you feeling better? Just even a wee bit better. I hope, I hope. I hope so. All right, everyone, I'm gonna move on to a new color for the background. This is the same technique, just a different color. So if you like the background I have with the purples, blues, and whites, we're gonna move on to purples. And then we're gonna stack some white on top as well to help break it up a little bit. So if you wanna do purple with me, I'm using the same brush. I'm gonna use red and blue mixed together. And once again, I will add just a touch of white. I just personally like to brighten up these colors a little bit. So I add just a little, little scoop of white in there just to brighten up my purple a tad. You'll notice when you mix red and blue, it creates quite the dark purple. So even just a slight amount of white will help with that. Again, your painting though, do whatever shades you want. If you want a lavender, add lots of white. You can even change the tone or the uh, yeah tone of your purple by adding more red or more blue. Lots of different purples you can make. Good point. Uh, Lydia. Lydia said, does, do the sides of the canvas need to be painted? That's totally optional. Um, I think it kind of cleans it up to paint the sides. So if you want to do this exact same technique all along the sides, definitely you can do that. I usually skip that personally just to save time and I can concentrate on your comments and answer questions. But that's a great point for everybody else. Definitely paint the sides of your canvas if you want to clean it all up. Yes. Feeling okay. Good life. Good. Yeah, Rosie, that's kind of uh, my goal, just to uh, have something to entertain some people. If you're painting along, that's great. If it's just something entertaining to watch, that's cool as well. It's all what you want to do, right? Um, as an extra point, everybody, too, don't be afraid to go backwards with color. If maybe you're adding something and you're like, oh, it's kind of overtaking, like I'm adding this purple and it's like, oh, Maybe it's getting a little dark. Maybe there's maybe too much purple. You can always, always go back and re-add blue, re-add any other color you were wanting to add or did add before. So feel free to do that at any point, okay? If you wanna re-add a color, maybe it gets covered up or just something's not working the way you want, that's fine. You can go back and re-add it. Um, another point I'd like to point out, <laughs> another point I'm pointing out, um, you can obviously stack on top. 
maybe not obviously, I'll say you can stack on top. Um, so if you want to stack on top of the blue, it's not necessary to be careful and you don't need to go in every single gap like this. You can just kind of plop it right on top. Maybe it kind of covers up a gap. Maybe it kind of blends in with the blue that you've already placed down. That's all fine as well. If anything, I encourage it because it helps blend the colors a little bit. You still want individual brush strokes, but it's always nice to have kind of some in-between colors too. Maybe when you stroke on top of the blue, you create kind of a bluish purple, for example. And you'll see lots of variations of that as we go along with different colors. So don't be afraid to stack color on top of color. As long as you're not mixing them all together with a bunch of different brush strokes, then you'll be fine. You'll still get the nice individual strokes so that you see all of the, uh, yeah, all of the hard work you're putting into it, all of those individual strokes that you wanna see for that impressionistic look. Pointillism, that was another good word as well. I'm not a professional artist, everybody, so I use words sometimes that, uh, <laughs> they're not professional. Sometimes I say to splotch the paint on the canvas, blop it on, I don't know, there's lots of different wordings I use, but I always appreciate when somebody comes in with a, <laughs> a, a good big art word. <laughs> like pointillism. It's like, oh yes, of course. That is a style. <laughs> um, yeah, my uh, art history consists of um, high school level art classes and then lots of Bob Ross. That's about what I learned, you know? No post-secondary anything, just lots of practice. So I always point that out because I think some people are under the impression that I have years and years of education in the art industry and it's really just practice. I have years of practice, just not uh, not instruction. Other than Bob Ross, my idol. Thank you. Oh yes, Christy, I did ask. What, how was that? Do, 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 do. <laughs> no worries, Grandma. I'm glad you asked it. Sorry if I missed it a little earlier, but yeah, you do not need to wait for it to dry. If anything, I like it being a little bit wet so everything kind of blends together, yes. Again, not too much. We don't want it to blend together into one solid color, but as I was explaining for sure, if it blends a little bit with each stroke, that's great. I think that's great. It all adds to the painting. In terms of the gaps, you can see I am trying to concentrate on covering up gaps. We still have one more color for the background, so if there are some gaps, that's okay. And I mean, if you're, um, if you're okay with having gaps in your painting too, or gaps in the background, then you're fine as well. I just try my best to really cover up everything with paint, even if it's white paint. I think it's, uh, it's nice to have a fully completed canvas that way. So white will actually be our last color that we add to the background. So even if I have white on top of my white gaps, that's what I'm looking for. I want just a nice full, complete canvas with paint. All right, so that's what mine's looking like. Again, I'll, go, I'll give like a minute or two in case you're catching up on that. If anyone has questions, again, let me know. No worries, Amanda, sounds good. Thank you, life. Uh, Lynn, so I had some gaps when I was doing my blue. Uh, I've been covering them up with my purple. So if you have some gaps, you're totally fine. You're on the right track, definitely but I would say cover a lot, yes. I would say with the base color, which is blue for this one, um, it's beneficial to cover a lot, just to cover your bases, as I call it, yes. Thank you, Kathy, thank you. Um, probably about two hours. It's my goal to finish the tutorial in about two hours. We'll see, sometimes I go a little over, I go, uh, more often than not, go over the two hours by about 10 to 20 minutes. But even beginners, I have lots of beginners who join me uh, that was Lynn who was asking, yes. And uh, yeah, they're able to follow along. Some people take a little bit of extra time after, for sure. Everyone has their own pace. It's I don't even think it's a beginner versus expert thing. I think it's just a personal preference thing. So you're fine, do, do whatever you feel. Oh yes, Lynn, yes, yes, yes. Normal human being. <laughs> I'm a normal human being too. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yes, I have a lot of people attending the tutorials who have never painted ever, ever. And usually they're able to follow along at about the pace I am. Sometimes what they do at the end is slow down so that they can kind of do the last few things a little more perfected. Um, but otherwise, most kind of uh, stay, in, uh, stay on pace, I would say, yes. 
Brittany, hello. No worries. Brittany, I totally understand. It, it, Facebook, there's something in the water tonight on Facebook because everyone's saying the same thing, so you're not alone. Um, I pinned my Twitch channel to the chat, twitch.tv slash Aaron Bumpaints. There's a whack of us on Twitch right now. They're all saying it's much, 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 much better. So if you feel like joining in there, feel free. Um, if you'd rather wait till later, totally fine too. You know the drill, it'll be on Facebook and then eventually YouTube. So with earth tones, I do a dark on the bottom, like green, browns, and ochre cream on top. Uh, Lee, I'll be, uh, I'm gonna call you Lee, okay? If you prefer something else, let me know. I'll talk a little more about that with the actual line. I think for now, the background isn't a huge deal in terms of um, what colors you're using, but definitely I will go through um, things about, I guess, the line layout in terms of shading and things uh, with you. Uh, probably the next step after the white, actually, so. <laughs> Lynn, you need to really, yeah, you need to really let loose with this one for sure, for sure. Um, with impressionistic paintings in general, it's all about loosening up and trying to get the basic shape of things and not really getting a harsh edge anywhere or clean edges, I should say. And that's uh, my issue too. <laughs> I am also a perfectionist and I always want to get things. You saw me playing with the outline multiple times. Uh, yeah, it just, it really helps to try and loosen up for impressionistic paintings. Just uh, let the brush do its thing, you know? 10,000 times better, says Sandra. Excellent. Awesome, says Lee. Yes. Yeah, I would just do your own thing in the background and uh, I'll tell you about the line when we get to him after the next step. Twitch stream is fine, Facebook seems to be buggy. Unfortunate Wonderland, yes, I agree. I've heard this from multiple people too, so that's why I keep saying I don't think it's my my internet or anything, because I, and I've had successful Facebook streams too, so it's just uh, the way it is, unfortunately. Kim, it will be posted later. You can check it out on Facebook immediately after or on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. It'll be on there as well within a couple days. All right, let's do the last color of the background for those who are following with my exact background. I'm now just gonna grab some white on my brush. I did not wash off my brush. I didn't find it necessary to do that because the white is gonna blend anyway. Uh, so what I'm doing is taking just a small amount of white. I don't want a whole lot. And I'm just stacking this on top as well. So mainly what this white does, it kind of helps combine some brush strokes a little bit. You can see already what I'm talking about. We have some brush strokes that are bright, bright white and others that are definitely going to blend as they go. So it creates almost this marbled look. See that? So the white is blending with the blue and purple as I stroke on top. And that's just creating yet again, another layer. It kind of breaks up the purples and blues in my opinion, adds a little bit of light to the background. That's why I wanted to add it. I found it a little dark with just those two. So the white helps again, break it up, add a little bit of lightness. So if you like that look, you can do that as well. And I would say I add the least amount of this color. You can see I very much scatter the white, but it makes a world of a difference in my opinion. So I'll be doing that all over the background. Uh, Lee, my nine-year-old daughter is enjoying this. I'm so glad, you're very welcome. Sam, thank you for the host on Twitch. Thanks so much. Love your little emote there, he's cute. Do, 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 do. So again, it sounds like a lot of you like this look, overall look, technique, perhaps. Um, yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. I believe that was Lori um, who said, uh, do a whole series like this. A lot of you keep asking for animals. Why not a whole impressionistic animal series? I think that would be so cool. So look out for that if you're interested. Maybe I'll do some more very, very soon. We could even do different color schemes if anyone's interested, rather than doing all of the colors like I did on this one. I'm happy to do some warmer toned ones, cooler tone, earthy tones, I think is a fantastic idea. A noir type would be very cool as well. Lots of ideas, lots of amazing ideas. Amazing, Lisa, I'm so glad. Again, I wanna be able to see and help you, but that's the one thing I can't do as I go. I'm always happy to help you and anyone else, by the way, after the fact. Um, so if anyone has photos they need to show me after I'm done the tutorial, I can then respond to you uh, via Facebook Messenger, Discord, whatever your platform is, and I can help you as best I can while seeing your painting. So feel free if you uh, need some extra help there. So again, it's really up to you how blended or not you want it. I would say this one's a little more blended. You can see the white is a little more subtle. 
this one, maybe the white is a little more bright. So it's really up to you how blended or how bright you want it to be. If you want it more blended, you can even just take a clean brush, just kind of wipe it off on a towel, brush over top of a couple of these and that'll help blend them in. See how they disappeared a little bit there? So if you're not liking how bright some of them are, you can do that to as many or as few as you want. Just rebrushing on top to help them mix underneath uh, with the color below. You're welcome, Christy. I'm glad it was really good. Hello, Anne from Florida. Welcome in. A bear like this. I almost read that as a beer, Julesy, and I was like, a beer like this would be awesome. Hmm, a beer painting. Interesting. <laughs> but a bear would be really cool. Color mix for purple lin is blue and red. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I think the uh, the very large portrait style of the animals are very cool as well, Helen. Squirrel, squirrel or owl? Owl! Mm. Yeah, beer, I know. It's like a beer painting, what? It's like, okay, people want it, maybe. Owl would be cool. I know, life, I know. I was, I, I was seriously considering it. I was like, if more people want it. Mm -hmm. Carol, hello from Texas. Uh, Bev, that'll be it for the background. So if you want to play with anything in the background, you can do that now. Maybe if you want to re-add colors. Again, if you want it a little more blended, I am noting that mine is maybe a little more blended and not as harsh with the white. Then you can just brush on top or re-add blue. Here's another option. Grab your blue or purple, pop it on top, see? And it starts to cover up some of the white. So if you want it a little more blended, you can start to do that. I'm just going to leave mine, but I'll give you guys a minute or two if you're still working. Emily left Facebook to Twitch and had to leave Twitch as broadcast intro. Oh, I'm sorry, Emily. Sometimes that happens um, if the internet connection is a little unstable. I find just refreshing is good, but yeah, use whatever platform works for you. Perfect. Anne, welcome in. Another Anne. <laughs> and the other Anne says, Sea Otter. That's a cute idea, too. What do you call a lion wearing a hat? A dandy lion. That's good, Sam. There's a lot of good lion puns, you guys. I uh, I posted a little lion pun on uh, Instagram when I announced this event, and I saw Heather replied with yet another lion pun. I was like, oh, I hope this starts a trend. I hope. I can totally see an owl in this technique. I can too. Bard, thanks for the follow earlier. Sorry, I missed you there. We need a, a, uh, a cow and skunks. I had, wait, are you who I think it is? Uh, skunks was, were requested. It might be, might be Brittany, yeah? I noticed the Wonderland. There you go. <laughs> I noticed the Wonderland in your name and I was wondering, but now I know because of the skunks. I was like, who could that be? <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. I think you can change it, but maybe not. Boxer dog says Kathy. Dolphins and whales would be cool. Yes, dolphins and whales as well, horse. What do you get if you cross a snowman and a lion? Frostbite. Daughter's name is Luanda. Shout out Luanda, she's working hard, wants to say thank you. You're welcome, I'm glad you're enjoying. Hi Rachel from Cleveland, you'll paint on Friday. You're welcome, thank you very much. I'm not lying, I'm excited about this painting. Done the owl recently. Oh, okay. Penguins all the way. Yes, we had a few penguin fans in the chat another day as well. I'm glad, Lydia. I'm glad it's working out with white on top. Excellent, excellent. Sign says zebra. Penguins. Everyone's shouting penguins now. <laughs> okay. Let's wash off our brushes, everybody, and I can talk a little more about this lion here because I know some of you are changing up colors, so I want to make sure we're all taken care of. Hello, Char. Welcome in. Can't change name for 60 days, gotcha. Oh yeah, I did learn that, I did learn that. Okay, so again, the color scheme for this, you can really do any color scheme you want. I'll just point out a couple things that you wanna be aware of. Um, just to keep with the shape of the lion, you wanna get some lighter colors in certain areas, darker colors in certain areas. So if you wanna kind of look at that, but I'll point out some things for you, for example. So I keep the lighter colors, you can see on the outside of the mane here, and they start to progressively get darker as they get further in. So essentially use the darker colors to outline the face shape from the mane. See that, how it's all kind of dark blues, dark reds, etc. But then further out, you have some lighter tones. 
So you can apply that however you want. If it's earthy tones, you can do some very light greens, very light browns, and then as you go further and just darken up all of those colors. Um, it's your choice whether you want, you want to use all the colors and then all the colors darker or just stick to certain colors. I stuck to certain colors like I did yellows, then I made darker oranges, I used a very dark red and then dark blue for example. Um, I would suggest not using too many colors on top of one another. Uh, it might get muddy. So you want to think about what colors are close to each other on the color wheel, for example. Um, so yellows and greens would be great together, but maybe not greens and reds because they are opposite on the color wheel from each other. So that's why I worked from this very pale yellow into an orange, which is next to that on the color wheel, into a red. There's purples and then red, uh, blues, excuse me there. So that's what I was kind of working with, more of the rainbow other dark places to look for. I think it's easier to point out the darker spots, so I'm going to do that. So again, the outline of the face here. I would say the nose is mostly dark, so you have the bridge of the nose very dark, and then just kind of the nose itself is a little darker. I liked putting a little bit of darkness kind of around the eyes here so that the cheeks pop out with lighter colors. You can see the mouth is nice and light, aside from the mouth itself is very dark. The eyes, of course, will use some darker colors to outline. And then I did like to use some darker colors kind of up here just to show a little bit of separation from the head and the mane here, right? Um, the ears, I would say these are more medium tone, but again, you can have a look, kind of look at where dark colors are, where light ones are, and just apply your own color scheme as you want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually with the ears and then I'm going to go on to the mane. The ears here, you can see they're in the background, they're behind everything, so I think it's beneficial to put those on first. So if you're following along with the exact uh, layout I have, I'm going to be using pinks for the ears and then a little bit of purple in the middle so you get kind of that indent in the ear, right? Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to use um, this medium round brush, washing it off. Do you lay lightest colors first? Um, I did Kathy for the most part, yes. I'm going to do the ears first, but you'll see, yeah, I do the lighter colors. Whoops, I work kind of from the outside in. Yes. Carol says horse or chicken, baby animal says Sue. I could try Sue, I could try. Peacock, we had peacock suggestions as well. What's a lion's favorite state? Maine. Sam, you're all over with jokes today. So I'm gonna keep using the medium round brush as I just said, I'm mixing what I would call a medium pink. Uh, medium meaning like it's not super light, it's also not super dark, it's just somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle. That's what I described the ear as, more of a middle tone. It's not super light, it's not super dark. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> so I'm going to use this pink to shape out the ears. And something I learned when I was doing this, at first I did the ears just kind of like a plain circle like this, and I thought it looked a little bit too clean. It didn't really match the rest of the painting, so... Just to match with the rest of the painting, I would recommend still doing these small brush strokes as you're going around. Even though you're doing kind of a nice round shape, it still helps in my opinion to do the individual brush strokes to keep the uh, original look of the whole impressionistic painting. So, you know, get a little messy with it. If a few strokes kind of go outside of that uh, curve, that's fine. If these mix a little with the blue, that's also fine. So I'll demonstrate that again. pink and I'm just going around with small little brush strokes. Ding, ding. If I pick up some blue, that's totally fine. You can go either way too. You can even go back the other way if you want. I'm just doing that to shape up my ear a bit more. There we go. And you can fill that in with small little brush strokes as well. So again, keeping with the flow of, you know, where things are going, I'm kind of going around like this. I'm going in the shape of the ear, just getting closer and closer to the middle. Even though these brush strokes are all going to combine together, you'll still see a little bit of texture of the individual brush strokes, right? So I think it's important to still do those small brush strokes as much as you can. Even though they come into one big block here, if you get up close to the painting, you'll be able to see all the little ridges of all your brush strokes. Hi, sweets, how are you? Welcome in. How's it going today? Finally got Twitch, it's Karen. Oh, welcome in. Let me know how you like it, okay? 
Again, based on popular opinion, it's much better quality wise, but always curious what everyone's thoughts are. So again, you can see maybe some blue has come into my ear a little bit. You can either choose to stack on more pink or you can just leave it because I think it helps kind of uh, break up the brush strokes a little bit more as well. So it's really not a huge deal. Um, again, I think this uh, impressionistic style and look, it's important to be loose with. You don't need to worry too much about clean lines and keeping things all in the right places. I think it's almost better that uh, things are a little mixed up here and there. So there's my pink ears. And I'll give a quick half minute, then I'll go right on to the purple because it's just a small step after this. Twitch is a lot better. Brittany, I use it for my other streams. For some reason, only use Facebook for yours, but tonight Facebook was not having it. Yeah, I mean, if you're used to Twitch, that's even better. Um, I just know a lot of people are more comfortable on Facebook, so I totally understand if they want to stay there, but in my opinion, Twitch is much better. So yeah, you seem to know. <laughs> Who else do you watch on Twitch if you don't mind sharing? I'm glad it was Christy, I'm so glad. So again, quick little step here just for the last bit of the ears and then we can get to the actual lion face. Uh, just a little bit of purple in the middles here. So I'm gonna take that same brush, I did wash it off. You could technically use it without washing it. Just mixing red and blue. You might have this already mixed because we used purple in the background. But red, blue, you can do a little bit of white to brighten it up. I just wanted to do a little bit of stroking just right in this bottom middle part, just to give the ear a little bit of depth. So just kind of like a mini, you know, half circle right at the bottom middle here. And again, small little brush strokes. You can leave gaps in them. Again, it's all about just being loose here. We're not worried too much about getting exact shapes. Just kind of circling around, allowing it to mix on the pink. That's fine as well, as long as it shows up a little bit. There we go. You don't need to fiddle with it too, too much. Oh, very cool, Brittany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing those pop up more often. What are the green boxes that keep popping up near my text box? Um. Oh, um, so those are to earn channel points. That's something on Twitch that you can, uh, you can redeem channel points for free for certain things. I don't have my channel points really set up, but yeah, channel points, says Lisa. Um, essentially, if you click them, they give you some options. It'll allow you to unlock emotes that I have, um, modify emotes. I haven't really uh, customized my channel points to be honest, so they can be a lot more fun. Like sometimes people redeem channel points for a piece of art or some sort of benefit on the channel. So they're just like free little, uh, kind of like points that you earn for viewing. Uh, the green box is like a bonus. If you click that green box, you get a bonus number of points. That's a highlighted, there we go. Thank you, Lisa, yeah. So that's like if the chat's going very quickly, highlighting a message will help me see it better. They help me, uh, not really. They're just kind of like fun things to do on the channel. <laughs> but thanks for asking. <laughs> Again, I plan on customizing those soon. It said error, whoopsie, not sure why. Maybe refresh barb and maybe that'll help, I'm not sure. Okay, so we got the ears on. Let's move on to some colors. So I'm gonna move on color by color now. So what I'm gonna do guys is I'll point out exactly where I'm putting my colors. So I might flip around the, the uh, painting a little bit. I'm not gonna really focus on one section at a time. It's more so gonna be each color. So if you wanna choose a color for my color, if that makes sense. So if you're doing a different color scheme, you know, if I say light yellow, you can choose light green and then you'll just put light green wherever I put the light yellow. So just follow along with where I'm going with each color you want and then you'll get a, um, a different color scheme, but it should still turn out to be um, a nice shape, a nice transition from light to dark. If that's making sense. I think it is. I think it is. Cool. Catherine, thanks for the follow. Sweets, thanks for the follow earlier. So what I'm going to start with is actually just a very nice pale yellow all in here. Okay, so there is kind of some white in there. I'll, uh, what I like to do is I like to put the white on top last actually. So if you see any white, it's actually kind of opposite. I'll do white, the lightest color on top of everything later, but otherwise I'll go from light to dark. So I'm gonna start with a super, super light yellow. And I'll start to frame the outside and I'll tell you where else I put it. So I'm using that same brush, the medium round. You can mix together lots and lots of white with a tiny bit of yellow. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm not sure, Barb. Maybe, uh, maybe refreshing. I'm not quite sure, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's, uh, again, my channel points aren't set up customized yet, so there's not a whole lot to redeem them for that is very exciting. But if you plan on watching me again on Twitch, you might have, um, you know, channel points after a while to redeem for some cool things. So there you go. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> That's funny, Rosie. It's true, it's true, they're all mini panthers. Hi! Oh, it's not yuck. Yuk, ooh, please correct me. Art, welcome in. <laughs> Remember we said we were gonna call you Art. Oh, sorry, I just mixed uh, blue and my yellow. I'm just fixing that up. My plate's very overloaded today because I was just painting a little earlier, so things are getting a little messy here, but I'm trying my best. All right, super light yellow, so lots of white, tiny bit of yellow. All right, so same technique, right? We're still doing the small individual strokes. And I'm gonna stick this color, this very light yellow color, all along the edge of the mane. Now, I am trying to close up gaps here. So to close up gaps, you might wanna overlap a little bit onto the background. Just be cautious because your background might still be a little bit wet. You can see though, mine's going on pretty clean. And I'm just making sure I continue to load up my brush so I have lots of paint on here and then that way there's less of a chance that it's going to mix into that blue and purple in the background. So again, you can see I scatter on a little bit of yellow on top of the background and I'm also bringing it into the main a little bit. Always keep in mind too, even though this color is mainly going to be on the side here, you can bring it in a little bit because there's no harm in stacking on colors next to one another, right? So when I move on to my next color, it's actually going to be beneficial to have some of the yellow a little bit underneath it too, just to help close up some gaps. So you can bring it in a little bit. Again, the yellow is a little hard to see, but you can see it on the edge here and a little bit further in. So I'm going to keep going around the bottom and then all the way up the other side. Mm -hmm. Do -do -do. Oh, it's back. Excellent, Barb. I'm glad it's working. Interesting. Yeah, this is a painting tutorial art. Welcome in. So we're doing that lion painting. I don't know if you saw this another day, but we're trying to replicate this one here. So I'm just leading everyone through step by step what I'm doing. Small brush strokes all along the mane. Again, following the flow of the mane so that you can see they're going down and then back up or down and up. Either way you want to look at it, it's all the same. But they're all kind of framing where the mane is going. That's really good to hear, Christy. I'm very glad. Hearts from Barb. And so hopefully you can see what I mean, that you can use this paint to help uh, continue to shape up your line. So I felt my lines here were kind of straight. They're going straight down, straight up. So just to help kind of curve them out, I'm deciding to add a few extra strokes kind of out in this middle area here so it looks a little more curved. So that's what I mean. Even after the sketch, you can kind of switch up as you go and uh, use your colors to help shape up your line. So lots of opportunity to change things up as you go. You're never really locked into a shape with acrylics, especially. You can always go on top of things once they're dry. You can blend on top, it all works out nicely. So you can see now, I'm, my mane is a little more curved, I think. I think it's looking better. Thank you for shouting out art. I know, the reply option's fantastic. Cause sometimes it can be confusing who you're replying to and then doing the reply really helps. All right, I'm gonna continue this light yellow up here. So I'm kind of, again, framing the whole lion mane here. I'm going up, I'm gonna go along the top here. 
And we don't see a lot of yellow up here, but you can see it a little bit through, you see? So it was kind of like the base color I used. I'm gonna put lots of color on top, but it is still existent up here. So I would recommend bringing it all the way up. Uh, you can note what I'm doing at the ears here. I'm trying to overlap the ears so that we have some fur covering up. See how I'm kind of stroking up and out a little bit? That helps cover the ear a little bit and helps bring it backwards. We're gonna be doing a lot more of that with other colors, but I'm starting it off with my yellow light yellow. Once again, I'm just noting how many times I'm going back to my uh, plate to grab more paint. It's very important, in my opinion, to be grabbing fresh paint every few strokes. It's a lot of work, but it allows you to get a nice clean stroke every single time so it doesn't get too dry or messy. Okay, I'm just giving a minute or two for that. I have a couple more spots I want to add the yellow just to kind of start off some areas and then we'll move on to another color. Here's a reminder. Yeah, Brittany, dude, dude, on Twitch, I talk all the time about doing a cloud series. I really want to start a series of cloud paintings so bad. So I'm excited for you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it. That's going to be so cool. Feel free to send me photos. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a whatever. When I stream uh, regularly, I have a better setup. I have a two camera setup, but just for now I have the one, so I have to move it around with me, but it's just because it's front facing, everything's front facing. So that's all right though. As long as it doesn't bother others, I'd rather have the better sound. So I'm gonna just move it with me. <laughs> oh yeah, art, hmm. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a better switch, I think. No worries, Lynn. You take your time. You take your time. That's what I said, too. Oh my gosh, Brittany, we're on the same level. Yeah, I want to do like all sorts of clouds. I want to do thunderstormy clouds. I want to do bright, fluffy clouds. All of it. All of it. It is a dance party. Always, Rosie. Okay, uh, Lydia, maybe try using just a little more paint and just kind of lightly laying it on. It might mix a little bit as long as it doesn't smear too much. Uh, light yellow though and pink, it'll just make kind of an orange color, so it's not a huge deal if it blends as long as you're not bothered by it. Belinda, no worries. Yes, it'll be available after on Facebook and then eventually on YouTube. Yeah. I'm considering the baby animals. I think that's a great idea. Um, you could try, Mish. It would definitely give you a different look, but you could, there's nothing wrong with it for sure. That would give you just a different textured look rather than the more impressionistic type thing. And the impressionism is like all the, the brush strokes, I would say. But yeah, you could stipple if you wanted, sure. <laughs> Don't worry, Lynn, you go at your own pace. Okay, couple other spots for yellow, everybody. You can see a little bit kind of at the cheek area, so I wanna get that in there. And otherwise, a lot of the yellow here is bright yellow. We have kind of the cheeks, I might do a little bit on the chin here. So let's do that all together. White, a little bit of yellow. So the cheek area, it's kind of like bordering right around here. So I'm just gonna brush on some like this. So this is once again, kind of like the base layer to everything. We'll be stacking lots of stuff on top, but yeah, outside cheek, outside cheek. And then a little bit down here as well. So you can just stroke on some little strokes here. Again, this is kind of like the base layer so that there's not just plain white underneath. Even though we don't see a whole lot of yellow, it'll be kind of covered up by some white, some brighter yellows. Still good to have a nice little base. So I'm gonna do that right there on the chin as well.
kind of coming down like this. And you can see I'm purposely trying to cover up my stencil, not my stencil, my uh, outline as well. So we don't want that showing through. We want just uh, all of our little brush strokes. Still lots of time to cover that up, but it's good to just kind of start thinking about that if you are close to an outline. All right, so that's about it for the yellow. I'll give you a quick minute and then we're gonna move on to a new color. Finding it hard to get the right stroke with the coverage. I see, yeah, stipple away, stipple away, Mish. You could try using a little more paint perhaps if coverage is your issue, but uh, yeah, if you think stippling's gonna do it for sure. Maybe a mix of both would be cool. Painting clouds is like painting something abstract from the universe. It's really hard, at least for me. It is. That's why I kind of want to do it. I think it's going to be a cool challenge and it'll show off, um, hopefully it'll show off how many different kinds of clouds you can do. Because I stick to kind of a few different uh, shapes, but uh, yeah, I want to I wanna broaden my horizons a bit. Clouds are hard. Yes. Not going to lie. I feel like an imposter watching that paint. Oh my goodness. You're fine, Brittany. Oh well. <laughs> There's lots on Twitch who just watch along. So you're fine. You're amongst friends here. Right, Lynn? I know. I do it all the time and then it's like four minutes later. Cool, Mish. I can't wait to see what the two techniques together. That'll be cool. Sloth would be fun, says Amy. Flamingos. All good ideas. You guys really love your animals. Okay, so I'm going to wash off my brush, everybody. I'm going to start to move into a nice light orange. So light orange kind of next to my yellows here, moving into the reds and eventual blues, purples, etc. So I'm going to wash off my brush. And we want to mix a light orange. So orange is made by mixing yellow and red. And to make it a nice light orange, you're just adding lots of white to it. So in theory, if you wanted to just um, add a tiny bit of red to your light yellow, that would make a nice light orange. If you'd rather mix a new pile, again, you can do lots of white with just a little bit of red and yellow. That'll make a nice kind of light, kind of creamsicle orange. That's how I think of it. Yeah, I think the sponge will work out cool, very well, Brittany. I want to try with oil paints personally, but I bet a sponge would be cool too. Then trees and mountains, yeah, I know. Oh, I see, Lynn. Okay, I thought you were saying, because I always say one more minute. Giraffe, oh. Is cat orange too dark? Um, I'm not super familiar, but I think it might be a little dark. I would add a little bit of yellow or a little bit of white to that if you can. Sure. So uh, the light orange next is going to be just working our way into the line a little bit more. So you can see mine's pretty pale. That's the way I want it though. I want it nice and light. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to stroke a little closer into the line. So I am overlapping a little bit of my light yellow. You can see that just to get lots of different layers in there. But I'm going to move it a little further in at the same time as well. So once again, sticking around the outside of the mane, moving it a little further in as I go. Same thing, just using the tip of my brush, just doing strokes, kind of framing the line. I keep saying, kind of going with the flow of the line. See how it's starting to stack up a little bit. Now we're getting all these colors kind of stacking up, mixing together. That's how this whole look is gonna come together. A lot of mixing around and stacking of color. Same thing, I'm working my way up, overlapping a bit, but also coming a little further into the lion. I'm gonna come down the forehead a little bit here. You can start to see I'm trying to shape up the main area here where it kind of comes down in a V shape.
No worries, Christy. I understand. That's okay. It's getting late. I saw more animal suggestions in the chat. I'm going to have a good look at those in a second. Just wanted to get the rest of my mane on there. Giraffe, please. Yes, I read that. Oh, yes, I read the cad orange. Sandra, I'm holding up for a hippo. Oh, so cute. I second the hippo. Can't see the whole canvas because of chat. I can move it maybe a little more in the center here. Hopefully that helps. I believe there are options in the bottom right, Kathy. Um, there's like different uh, full screen theater modes, things like that. I would try looking in the bottom right. But otherwise I hope the centering helps with that. Right? I feel that way every day, Brittany. <laughs> I wish, Lynn. I need to stick to copyright free music. That's the only thing. Christy, I don't at all. If you need to go to bed, I completely understand. Yeah, I wish I had full reign over which songs, but um, yeah. Can't do copyright songs. Good night, Christy. Okay, couple more spots for the orange. Again, you can see kind of by the cheek area, I frame that a little bit and I will use the orange kind of around the chin here as well. Okay, so we'll do that as well. A little more of that same color. And I just like to stack that once again, kind of a little further in, a little on top of the yellow. So I hope we're all getting kind of the idea here. Again, looseness is good. We're not too worried about getting exact shapes everywhere. It's just about stacking on all of these small little brush strokes. And again, the order of light to dark, I think is key so that we get all of the different shapes in here. Cause again, we don't want it to be a total rainbow mess, but you can see how it's kind of keeping the shape so far. And as we get darker, that'll become even more evident. We'll see lots of things kind of shaped out a little bit better. So again, purple along the chin, it's almost like little chin hairs. We got some pulling in from the yellow on the cheek area as well, just to start to cover up that. I'll give a quick minute for that and we can keep going here. Thank you, lady, thank you. Bid, hippos or flamingos? Wow, a lot of hippo requests, huh? I got you, Brittany. That's like, it's what I thrive during though. <laughs> the rainy days and then I'm inside painting happily. No worries, Kathy, I'm glad. Okay, so next we're gonna be moving on to like a medium to hot pink, just so you're aware. James, thanks for the raid, hello. Welcome in. I didn't even realize you were streaming, how was it? Okay, so we're taking that medium round brush, we're gonna mix together what I call a medium pink. So pretty much the ear color, we're just gonna start applying that within the lion. So red and white mixed together. Nothing too dark, nothing too light. Wee wee. James, how was your stream? Sorry, my alerts didn't go off. It's because it's tutorial mode. You're good. You're good. This will be filmed as usual. Filmed. <laughs> It'll be recorded. 
All right, so working just our further into the main here, I'm just going to start stacking on this medium pink color. So you can kind of see the contrast now. It's getting a little bit darker as I go in. But same thing, we can stack this on top of the orange because even if it mixes with the orange, it's just going to create kind of an in-between pink orange color. And then we're also bringing it further in to the lion. So we're getting closer and closer to that kind of face shape area, right? Just continuing to fill in gaps too. So as I'm looking at kind of the orange yellow areas, I'm also putting on maybe some small brush strokes to help fill in some gaps. But again, I'll point out later on what I do is I actually go on top of everything, pretty much everything with a little layer of white and that helps cover up gaps too, even though it's white paint. I think I said this earlier, it's better to have white paint, I think, rather than white canvas. So you can always use white to kind of cover up those areas in a sense. So same thing, it's, it's really a pattern here. You can see I'm working along the outside of the main, getting further in, further in. The only difference up top is I start to bring the pink out a little bit. So now that our background is still a little bit dry, is now dry, uh, you can actually overlap very cleanly. See that? You can see the brush strokes go right on top, no mixing, no mixing. So if you wanna bring out a couple, more than a couple apparently, kind of sprawling out, up and out, that'll help make your mane look a little fluffier rather than kind of stuck to the bottom of the head like my ponytail is. We want it a little fluffier, like a beautiful big mane. So I start to do that with my pink for sure, for sure. You can see I'm also going into the orange a little bit with it, of course. I'll catch up on these Twitch messages in a moment. I gotta keep the pace up. I'm looking at the time. I'm really taking my time with some of these colors. So now that we have the technique down, you can see I might go a little bit quicker with things, but still hopefully at a pace that works for everybody. Again, if I need to repeat anything, you can just let me know and I will help you out. But again, with this painting, I'll keep repeating it. It's, uh, it's really up to you in terms of what colors. I think we all have the basic concept down of kind of lights to darks and where we're putting them and we can just continue to follow along with where I'm putting them. So just take your time. If I'm going a little quick at points, just keep taking your time. It's all good. I don't know any Brittany. Right. And yeah, I, I, acrylics I don't think are toxic, but I don't want to recommend that because I really don't know if it's animal friendly. Good question though. If anyone knows animal friendly paints, you can tag Unfortunate Wonderland there. Oh, bid, try messaging the zoo. Interesting. You're good, James. It means you're having fun. That's good. Yeah, that's a good point, Bid. Excellent. Please, I'm happy to join on in Discord too if you guys need instruction later. Whenever you guys plan, let me know. Floof main gang. Thank you, Art. Good night, have a good rest. Lynn, you're good. Emu says, Terry, good idea. I'm just gonna go around and make sure I've got more pink here that I need. Oh yes, yeah, so I put some pink, you can see below the nose here. So I'm not looking at the dark pink here, I'm looking at the light pink around here. So I can do a couple little, not really whiskers, kind of whiskers. We'll actually do some legitimate whiskers later, but I wanna do a couple brush strokes kind of on the side here. just to start to cover up that area. Looks like I have some near the cheek as well. I need 
to make a little more. It's getting a little dry. So once again, just working a little closer to the eyes. I would go maybe a little bit above the nose too. It looks like I have a lot of my sketch there, but I'm gonna keep stacking on the color just to demonstrate that we can put some, uh, some fur there. Okay, I'll give you a quick minute and we can do another color. Again, I wanna pick up the pace just cause I see time is slipping by here with the two hours that I usually try and stick to. Joyce, what is Twitch? Twitch is a live streaming platform. I'm on both Facebook Live and Twitch right now. So you're on Facebook. I also have a group on Twitch who are watching and uh, there's kind of like two separate conversations. So I try my best to switch between both of them to help everybody. Um, but I have my pinned uh, Twitch link at the bottom of the uh, Facebook chat there if you're interested. Uh, are we doing pink on the cheek, Zion? Yes, I put a little bit kind of by the orange there, for sure. Yeah, let me know when you guys want to do it. I can help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Groke is right. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing kind of a medium blue next, just so you know, so it's not gonna be dark like the background, it's gonna be more medium tones. See it kind of, it's below this dark blue. We're gonna do medium and then dark blue just to kind of help transition. So I'm looking more like this one here. I would think so too, Kathy. I just don't, uh, I don't really know, so I don't wanna make the full suggestion. But yeah, acrylic paints are all water-based and I think non-toxic, most are anyway. So I would think they are, but that's true. Calling a zoo might be a good idea. Uh, so we have the yellow, the orange, and the pink so far. We're doing a light blue next, or a medium blue, I should say. So you can take that same brush, the medium round brush, you can wash it off. We're gonna mix blue with white. So we're making a, uh, again, I call it a medium blue. Same idea as the pink. It's like not too dark, not too light. It's just somewhere in the middle. It's a nice bright blue. We're doing this before we add a very dark blue. We're kind of doing a transition from medium to dark. That's what I'm looking at there. A nice bright blue. Yvette might know that's true. <laughs> oh, Barb, you're funny. Okay, so let's have a look here. So I'm gonna use this kind of, oh, that's a little bright. I'm gonna light mine up just a touch, okay? I'm putting this again, kind of uh, overlapping the pink. Even though they look quite different, pinks and blues, they mix together nicely. They'll just make kind of a light purple. So I'm not too worried about that, of course. Purple would be lovely. But once again, I'm moving closer, even closer to the uh, face outline. See how I'm getting nice and tight to it. Because we don't have a lot of colors left uh, kind of to frame the, uh, the face other than our dark colors. So I'm wanting to make sure this kind of medium blue is getting nice and close by here. And also kind of transitioning out on top of that pink. With each color, he starts to come closer and closer and closer. More and more together. And I can't say it enough how you can just change this painting up with a few extra colors too. If you're seeing colors that you think are missing, that you wanna see in your line, you can just keep using this theory of light to dark and where I'm placing light colors versus darker colors and do whatever ones you like. 
Now I'm not gonna put too much blue up here by the main because uh, there's lots of blue in the background. So I'm just gonna keep my pinks up there. I'm gonna add some darker colors later on, like a very nice hot pink, for example. So for now, I'm kind of leaving that area alone. And the blue, you can see what I do is I bring it down kind of on the nose now. So I'm gonna come like, maybe down like this. So again, following the direction of things, the nose is coming down, so I'm bringing these brush strokes down as well. You can kind of frame the eyes a little bit. The eyes, by the way, maybe you've noticed there's not a lot of green in the painting. I saved my green for just the eyes. So just in case anyone's wondering, where's the green gonna come in? I saved that for the eyes here to make them really pop off. I thought that was a fun idea just to keep one color for one feature like that. So just so you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm saving it. I will also bring some blues down here kind of underneath the eyes. So again, darkening up underneath the eyes. I'll give a quick minute for that blue. We're gonna do like a medium purple next and then we're gonna get to our nice dark colors on top. So we have some like hot pinks. I do do a nice bright yellow at points. I'm gonna do my nose, a nice dark purple, things like that. Maybe that means you can change it. I'm not sure, Brittany. I would think on desktop is probably better or easier for that, but I, I'm also not uh, not an expert. <laughs> I'm like two and a half months into Twitch here. <laughs> Kathy, that's cute. Yeah, you found the emotes. They're all cute. I have my own emotes too. I've got some uh, little buns. Alona. Oh, no worries. Stay safe. Alona's saying her uh, power might be going out. Or yeah, our power just went out too far behind. No worries, Alona. Yeah, you can find this later. No worries. Don't rush. Don't worry about the power. Just uh, stay safe and uh, stay cozy. Stay cozy. Your lines look like a baboon. Maybe with like the pinks and stuff. Maybe you need just a fluffier mane. I think the mane really brings the lion out of this, right? So you can always fluff up the mane a little bit. I do, Lydia, all the time. I had that happen today. Today with my uh, multiple season branch painting, multiple times. A lot of people on Twitch right now were there watching and they can attest to the fact that I was getting a little frustrated and thinking it wasn't looking great, but it ended up looking good, so. Yes, for sure. And especially with impressionistic type things, I find it's uh, it's after like the last few layers that things start to really clean up because it's the dark layers, right? The dark layers will really, really clean it up. I do, Brittany. Yep. Yeah, even if you change your name, you'll have to tell me because they're also like, who is that? Okay, let's do a medium purple, everybody. So you can see some purples amongst the... You can see right here, for example. I add some on the nose. So we're gonna do that maybe around here as well. So take your brush, wash it off. Blue, red, and white. Blue, red, and white. And again, medium purple. So it's not super light, it's not super dark. Just somewhere in between. And I don't add too much, surprisingly. I love purple and I don't add too, too much of this, honestly, it looks like. So I'm sticking that again even closer to the outline here because purple is a little bit darker than blue depending on how much white you put in it but generally purple I find to be quite a dark color so I'm kind of putting that closer 
to the face shape and just using it to of course fill in any gaps that I might be seeing around there and just also adds to the nice rainbow of all the colors we have. Um, I definitely like to put this on the bridge of the nose just to help to fill up that area as well. Kind of, kind of in the middle here, a little lower down coming down. Another key spot for the purple, I like to put this medium purple kind of down here because we're gonna use a nice dark purple for the mouth. And so having more of the medium purple kind of helps with shading down here. It's almost like the uh, the shading of the purple extends down without making it too, too dark. So putting that there again, it's going to look kind of funny. Someone mentioned an ugly stage earlier. This is kind of what's going on, right? We don't have the nice features really, really dark on top of everything. So everything might look a little mixed up for sure at this stage. So if you're feeling that way, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, I'm sorry to go kind of all over the place. I've gone around the frame of the uh, face the nose, below the mouth, and then lastly I like to put a few more on that fluffy mane. We're still kind of fluffing it out a little bit. Again, you can use these strokes to overlap with your ear a little bit. I just love the idea of having the mane a little more broken up up here, as if it's just kind of parting to the side. You can kind of see through it a little bit. I think it's great. So I am stacking purple, for example, on top of a little bit of yellow. Purple and yellow are opposites. However, because the yellow was done at the very start, we're not worried about the purple and yellow blending. So while we don't want to really stack on a whole lot of that, we don't want to go like purple on top of all of this yellow here. If it happens a little bit, it's not going to create a muddy color. It might look a tad messy here and there, but it's not enough to really affect the painting in my opinion, as long as that one color is dry. So you can always do that with different colors as well if they're opposites, as long as the one is dry. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we'll give another quick minute. Then we're gonna move on to some very, very bright, darker colors. This is really gonna help frame our line up so we can go a little more, little more sparse with these because you can see it's it's kind of more of a pastel -y line there's not a whole lot of darkness to it so I'll point out where my dark blues are I have a nice dark pink going on let's see yeah dark blue we got pink for the nose we'll do some yellows oranges if we wish and that's really just going to be cleaning up with some eyes the nose the mouth things like that Lydia that's okay but yeah, I hope you heard my answer there. It's definitely common for it to be like a questionable stage. And again, it definitely happened to me earlier today, earlier today. Thank you, Lynn, thank you. I thought it was a nice feature to the green eyes. No worries. Uh, Inspire Creator Space, you're very welcome. Have a great night, you too. There you go, a lot of you are in the same boat. There you go. Kiki Turtle, hello, welcome in. Love it. Thank you, Kiki. So this is a tutorial that I'm doing step by step with everybody. You're welcome to stick around and watch. I don't know if you're painting along, but either way, you're welcome to stick around. Bid, thanks for the follow. PR Baby, thanks for the follow. Audrey, Aubrey, excuse me. I'm missing everybody because my alerts are not on right now. Tutorial mode. Um, I read your question, Brittany. I'm going to think about it as I teach in the next step and then I can answer you a little better, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go on to some darker colors now. So as I was saying before, these are when uh, things will probably start to shape up a little bit. Uh, so we have some like dark blues, for example, here, dark pinks. You can throw in some yellows, oranges if you want, just as like little highlights almost. I like to put that kind of in our empty areas that we have already, but I will be stacking on white later on there. Uh, yeah, again, I'll point out exactly where they're going and we can all follow along. So let's start with blue. I just want to do blue because it really helps shape out this part here. So I'm using the same brush, medium round, grabbing my blue paint. So phthalo blue, I'm not mixing with anything this time. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, and I'm going to use this to really help frame out something. So if you feel like a shape isn't really there, so for example, this chin, this face, this will really help. My one word of caution 
is you can see how little I'm putting. You only need a little bit because it's such a dark color. You don't need to stroke on all of the amounts that we've been doing with all the other colors. I'm just doing smaller strokes, very spaced out and very tight to the edge of what we're framing. You can of course expand a little bit. You can see maybe a couple little strokes just to help blend, but mainly sticking to the outline. So minimal, see how minimal that was, but it made such a difference. And if I were looking straight on on this, I would be taking much more time to really shape out everything the exact way I want, but you can see how it really just brought that whole shape to life. So that cheek, for example, looks a little big. I can now use the blue to help shape that the way I want. Closing it in. Different look, there we go. I also like to put some up here just for a little bit of shadow. It's almost like you're kind of showing where the face and the uh, and the mane starts to separate. So again, just minimal amounts. Ooh, what a struggle. <laughs> Quite the reach there. I'm just looking around. Not too much of this dark blue left. Maybe a touch kind of along the outside of the bridge of the nose here. Helps frame that a bit. You can dot in just a little in there if you want. See that starting to come together though. Just little bits, little bits at a time. Good, I'm pretty sure that's all the dark blue. Minimal amounts, so I'll leave that there. We're gonna do some hot pink next. No worries, Helen, you're very welcome. If I can help you at all, you know you can uh, message me anytime. Joyce, you can send it to me over a private message on Facebook if you want. Hot pink, you got it. Love all those pinks. So Brittany was asking, what's your favorite type of thing to paint tutorials aside? I've been big into flowers at all points of my life. Um, I don't paint a whole lot of them, but I actually chose to paint some roses for my first oil painting the other day. And I'm really liking how they're coming along. There's still lots of work, but um, I really like flowers. There's so many different types, all the pretty colors of flowers, right? Uh, lots of layering with them, lots of textures. I love my textures. Uh, I would say flowers are top. Galaxies have been a lot of fun recently too. I like experimenting with galaxies because there's so many different uh, techniques you can use with those. And space is pretty dang cool. So those are my answers. PR, hello. Thanks for the follow a little earlier. I didn't have my alerts on, so I need to look at my list a little more often. Welcome in, hope you're well. If you have any questions, let me know. Texture. <laughs> All right, hot pink, hot pink. All right, so we're gonna do uh, red mixed with just a little bit of white. That's going to be a nice hot pink for us here. So we've made lots of pinks before, but this is going to be the darkest pink we've made. So lots of red, a little bit of white. Let's have a look here. So same thing, we can kind of use this around the very edge here, kind of just dispersed amongst the blue. It's just yet a different color, so it doesn't look too overwhelmed with one color, but it helps frame the face of the line a little bit here. And it's just nice to have different, different shades of each color, right? That's kind of why I kept going back to the same colors, just darker versions. I like the idea of making them just slightly darker and having them appear in different spots on the painting. I especially like, I especially like the hot pink on the mane up top. You can see I do a lot of that here, a lot of it kind of sprawling out. So let me focus on that for a second. Again, you can overlap the ear. I love continuing to kind of go on top of the ear with different colors so that it looks like it's kind of hiding behind. So stroking up and out. Yet another color, you can see how it's getting just so filled up in there. It's great, it's great. And I do like to bring the pink up a little higher than most of the other colors came. So if you need to help frame kind of this area here, just a little bit more, pink is a good one to use for that. I 
Pink is a nice, it can be a nice dark color, but I find it just a little softer than blues and purples. So that's why I chose to kind of bring it up here a little bit more, for example. Mm -hmm. Coming together. Now I've got one more spot for my pink. Maybe you can spot it, but the nose, the nose is nice and pink here. So what I did for the nose, you can see I kind of outlined in this dark pink and then I put some lighter pink in the middle. So I like to start with the dark pink just to outline it. And then what I did is I used white and kind of pulled in some pink just to cover up. So let me lead you through the nose here. So you can still use those small little brush strokes to help frame the nose itself. So kind of using small, uh, yep, yeah, small horizontal vertical diagonal lines kind of framing around. I want two nostrils on either side. So I just do two big blobs of this hot pink. I do a nice vertical line kind of coming up in the middle there. And then I'm gonna fill in with more of a medium pink. So here I go, I'm just framing that. I call it like a, a stretched out horizontal heart. That's still how I think of it. Just framing around. Again, you can be a little messier, of course. With the impressionistic look, it doesn't need to be exact. That's the beauty of this whole painting. Like that. I want two nostrils on either side. So kind of on that bottom left, bottom right of the kind of sides of the heart there. And I also did a little extension, I guess, below the nostrils. So like a little brush stroke or two kind of coming out, coming out. There we go. And then what you can do is kind of fill that in with a couple brush strokes of more of a medium pink. So I'm just using a little bit of white into my hot pink and I'm just gonna stroke that in there very messily. If it mixes a little with the hot pink, perfect. My nostrils a little tilty. This happened with this painting too. I remember having a time with these nostrils. They kept being uneven and too big, too small. So I'm just gonna keep adding until I like them. There we go. Maybe a little more here. There we go. I think that's better. Cool, cool, cool. All right, pink, and then we're gonna wash off and move on. Other than brushes, what's your favorite random thing? To get textures, did you watch my abstract? I think you watched my abstract tutorial, yeah, Brittany? The spatula, I can't believe how cool that spatula was. I'd say that was my favorite for sure. I know, enjoy oh, there you go. I know I enjoyed the spatula, yep. Uh, which was very, uh, yeah, my answer before reading your uh, the rest of your statement there, spatula. <laughs> um, I like the palette knife, but that spatula was something else. I thought that was a hilarious tool to use and it worked so nicely. Don't forget to tell these special people in your life just how special they are to you. That's a Bob Ross quote, by the way. So you're all special. I can't forget to tell all of you special people in my life just how special you are. So there you go. Uh, Kiki, no, of course, love the technique. This is just um, my FaceTime camera on my desktop Mac. It's about seven, eight years old, I think. When I stream regularly on Twitch, I have a two camera setup. I use a Sony A6000, I believe it is for the uh, painting view, but this is a FaceTime camera. It could be Kathy, yeah, I don't know where you're looking exactly, but my the one I do here, it's always a little different because I'm not looking straight forward, especially for portraits and things that need to be symmetrical. I find it very tough to do from the side, but try my best, yeah. There could be some, I'm not sure exactly where you're looking, but yeah, could be some for sure. Thank you, Kathy. Hambina, welcome in. It is so satisfying, I know. Hambina, welcome. Is it Todd? <laughs> Kathy, I can, uh, so that was during an abstract painting tutorial and that one's on YouTube if you wanna see. That's the only time I've used a spatula. <laughs> and it was for an abstract tutorial. So I was doing uh, like big vertical strokes of paint and then doing some crisscrossing and stuff. There's a whole tutorial on YouTube if you'd like to see that. Um, Whoops, YouTube command, there we go. Cool, so if you click that link there, that'll bring you to my YouTube page. And uh, yeah, that'll show you uh, the abstract painting tutorial. It was a couple weeks ago, so you can see exactly how I use this spatula. It was really fun. I wouldn't use it for something like this, but 
for anything with like large brush strokes, you totally could. You totally could. Mm-hmm. All right. Seeing the time again, taking away. I have a couple more colors and then a couple more key colors. So a couple more colors just to fill in our line. Yellow, bright orange as well. So let's do yellow. I think yellow, no, let's do orange and then yellow, sorry. <laughs> We're doing a bright orange and then a bright yellow. So bright orange is made by mixing yellow and red. To be clear, guys, I don't mind going over nine o'clock. I just know sometimes people like more of the two hour period. So I'm trying my best to stick within that. It's obviously going a little over, but we're pretty close. And again, I keep saying, I feel like this painting, you get the general technique and you can kind of go very much at your own pace on your own uh, with colors too, but I'm getting through it, of course, for all of you who are following along here. So bright orange, just yellow and red this time, yellow and red, that's all. So no white required. Um, I like to stack this once again, <laughs> kind of near the edge here. It's just yet another slight color we can add. Because again, I like the idea of transitioning from light orange to dark orange, getting all the different tones in there. So just a bit here and there. Be careful not to bring this into the dark blue if your dark blue is still wet. I did leave it for a little later in hopes that our dark blue was a little dry, but just be careful. I would bring this in the main here. I would bring this maybe a little further down. You see we have this gap here. I will be filling that with whites and stuff, but we can bring the orange down a little bit in there. Cause once again, the orange is a darker, brighter color, but not quite as dark as blues and purples and all the cool tones. So if you need to fill in spots, it's a good one to use. So we're gonna bring it down a little into the forehead as you see. You can brush it into the mane as you wish. The mane up here has so many colors really. So as long as you're not mixing wet on wet on wet, you really can't go wrong. So again, just avoid the blue, but otherwise any other colors will mix fine pinks, yellows, etc. I also like the dark orange kind of coming down this way as well. So where that yellow existed, I'm just stacking on some orange and bringing it further down. Do a little more by the chin if you wish. I'd say that's about it for the orange. Thank you, Lynn, thank you. Oh, I'm sure it will. You can see even mine. I think at the start it was looking a little funny, but with each color it just gets better and better, I think, I think. So we've got a bright yellow. I will then be moving on to uh, kind of the big features like the green eyes, this purple mouth. I use just a touch of purple kind of for dots, the mouth up top. Um, and then white is really the last step, honestly. Again, white kind of uh, fills in any gaps, adds a little more texture to things. So it's a nice little color to add. Even though it seems redundant, I think it's very key. <laughs> Lisa, I'm not sure what mine looks like. You should post it. Uh, if you're not too nervous about posting it, you should really try just to uh, show what you've got there. I can give you some tips and I'm sure, I'm sure you're being your own toughest critic too, honestly. I find that all the time people say, oh, it looks like an absolute mess. And then I actually see it. And I'm like, no way. So feel free if you want, Lisa. Again, art share channel and Discord or just privately to me if you wish. All right, let's do some bright yellows, everybody. So bright yellow, I'm just stacking onto my brush like this. Of course, a clean brush, no mixing required. Once again, you can see the yellow just lightly stacked on top of my lighter colors here because once again, even though it's bright yellow, it's still a very light color in general. So I like to use this to start to fill in gaps, even in the lighter areas. So you can see kind of in this light yellow orange area, if I have gaps, you just kind of stack it on. It just helps brighten up the area without overpowering it in my opinion. 
So I'm concentrating on my gaps now. Again, you want to avoid going on top of any dark blue because that'll make a green. And again, if you like the idea of the green in the eyes staying in the eyes, then you'll want to keep it that way by not mixing yellow on top of blue. And I would also avoid purple. We don't really have a lot of purple other than the medium purple, which was minimal, but I would avoid stacking yellow on top of purple. So I'm going along the main, and once again going up here, stacking on here, adding some brightness up here. And yeah, I'm referring to this as a dark color just because it's a color that's not mixed with white, even though it is a brighter color. So just in case anyone's confused by that, I consider this kind of our darker color scheme, even though it is technically a lighter color. Um, again, I like to use the yellow to start filling in gaps. So if you have gaps kind of up here, which maybe you do because I didn't really fill that in with much, I like to use the yellow for that. So you can see how it doesn't add a whole lot of darkness. It just kind of fills it in with a nice bright color though. It's nice and bright. So I'm really starting to fill in the gaps here. And just to be clear, I don't need to fill in all gaps. Remember, I can fill those in later with white, but just kind of concentrating more on the gaps is all I mean. So all in here, you can see that filled in a lot. Down a little. Oops, got some blue in there. And then down here by the mouth, I like to use some bright yellows kind of above where the mouth is gonna go, as well as down here by the chin, just to once again, fill in gaps and or brighten up a little bit. So framing kind of the outside of that, uh, almost not the cheek area, kind of like the upper lip, you could say. See how that just filled it in. So it was our darker color, but it was nice and bright, so it didn't overpower anything. I love the yellow in this. And it's very typical to the lion color, the nice yellows, right? I've become so invested in watching this, I'm laying on in the dark, what have I become? I do that all the time with Twitch, welcome to an addiction. I know you've been on Twitch, I guess it sounds like, so you should know by now, but often I fall asleep watching Twitch now. <laughs> oh boy. Yep, Brittany knows, Brittany knows she's done a few tutorials, at least if more than a few, I should say. She knows it's a process, it all comes together. And sometimes it takes exactly the next day. <laughs> Everyone's had those moments, yes, Brittany. Yeah, and that'll make it appear even more different, Lisa, too, because you're using colored pencils or any different medium, it's always gonna look much different, much different. But yes, Lynn is supporting that. Take a distance from the painting next day, see one, exactly. It's like a good sleep, you know? Just like, ah, refresh, and you have a completely different look. Look at it from a slight distance as well. We're so used to painting so close or coloring so close to our canvas that even like a step or two back makes a world of a difference. You're never gonna view art like this, right? You're not gonna be like, wow, look at that. You're gonna look at it from a little bit of a distance and that's gonna make a big difference. <laughs> Give, <laughs> Kathy, I love that little emote. And I, I truly think we're all our own worst critics too. We're always looking at our own art and being critical about it. I could do better, I can do this and that, but I'm sure if you showed it to anyone else, they would see the beauty in what you're seeing wrong with it. Lynn agrees. Muzzle. <laughs> yep, whoopsie, Lynn, whoopsie. Oh, you're on the bed. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, uh, that too, that too. <laughs> Ooh, Team Mall, welcome in. Terry, perhaps? If I'm thinking correctly. But neon would be so cool. If you're able to post that when you're done, I'd love to see. 
Okay, let's get into uh, the last few details here, just so to make sure we're not going too far past nine. Um, you know, and again, there's gonna be slight differences between these, I'm trying to get it as close as possible, but I think we're pretty much onto the dark details here. We have these dark green eyes, uh, we have some purple to really shape out the mouth and these little uh, kind of like freckly bits, and then we go in with white to kind of highlight some things. We add some little whiskers, and that'll be about all. And of course from there, as I said earlier, you can go back to certain colors if anything got too covered up, if you need to reshape anything. So just keep that in mind as you go, okay? So let's do some eyes. So the eyes, I have a nice light green in the middle. So let's start with that. And then we're gonna frame it with some dark green. So I'm definitely gonna switch now, brushes that is. I'm gonna switch to the nice teeny tiny detail brush, <laughs> of course, bringing him out. Uh, we're gonna do some light green first and then dark green. So light green, you can use your little brush, mix lots of yellow, almost said white, lots of yellow, a little bit of blue. So you're getting this very like bright lime green color. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And you can just start with a nice big circle within the almond shape. I'll cut it up a little bit. Like I'll use the dark green to kind of shape that a little bit. So it's not quite literally two circles. But I like doing the pupil and the uh, the whole eyeball very round to begin with. So you can see just kind of filling in the middle of that almond. See, it looks quite scary at the start. <laughs> Remember that ugly stage? This is the scary stage. <laughs> this is like, whoa, <laughs> there are lasers coming out of my lion's eyes at this point. Trish, okay. Okay. Huh. Neon or even glow in the dark. Yeah, what if you did like neons or glowies for the eyes? Oh my gosh. Didn't like my colors line up, so mine looks like 80s bright colors. It's a different look. It's cool. I think that I'm very excited to see all the different versions of this because I think we're going to get a lot of that. That was rosy. Yes. Um, everyone's going to have different interpretations of what medium pink, dark purple, all of those words mean. So it just kind of you know, heightens the idea that all of them are going to be slightly different. They're going to be very different. I think it'll be very cool. Yes, CMG. <laughs> you should send a picture. Yeah. Again, Rosie, depending on where you're comfortable with Facebook, you can post photos to the event page. I'll explain that at the end. Uh, otherwise, Discord. I have a Discord community and you're welcome to post there as well. Yeah. Rave lion. <laughs> black light paint. I had a few black light paintings that I gave away recently. I don't have a black light to show them off though, so. Yeah, there's black light paints. They're they're very neon. It, I, I would consider them neon, but you need a black light to see them. Your line is overweight. It's just well fed, that's what I say. I always do my birds overfed. Well fed, excuse me. They're just bulking up for winter. He's bulking up for hibernation. Let's do uh, the dark green now to really frame these eyes. So dark green, you can use the same brush. You don't even need to wash it off. Use more blue mixing into your light green and you want to stick to the almond shape but once again i encourage you to just do small little brush strokes to make it a little choppier you can see it, it looks clean from far away but when you really get up close look at him staring into your soul you can see all the small little brush strokes how it all looks a little bit choppy around here some individual strokes kind of coming out and then i come down to meet up with the bridge of the nose as well so just so you know that all right so very like, it's almost like you're sketching it on, right? You're doing small little brush strokes. Sketch, 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 sketch. I'm just going around a second time, a third time. So you can see how the pupil ends up getting covered up a little bit. It's not, like I said before, it's not going to be a perfect circle. It's just kind of resting inside of the almond now. Same thing. And I don't know, I would say mine doesn't look angry. He just looks like he's really staring at you. Yours might look kind of angry. It's about to pounce on you. Who knows, who knows? So again, you can just add some little brush strokes kind of coming out a little bit if you want to mess it up in a way. It's just looser strokes kind of outside of the eye. Um, another key, I guess, is adding the pupils. I just add two small little dark green dots pretty much in the centers of those circles. 
You can start really small and then make them a little bigger at a time until you have a size that you like. But I would say these are pretty small, pretty small. And I'll just point out one more thing again, I like to bring in the two inner corners and just kind of bring them down into the bridge in the nose just to give that kind of shape. You know, your eyes, they kind of come down a little bit. Not to say we have lion eyes, but you know, they kind of fold down a bit. So I wanted to do that here as well. And that green really pops out as a result. I love the idea of having just the green eyes personally, or just choosing one, one color. Lydia, still the baboon, huh? Send me a photo, maybe I can help you. Maybe it's just what you're thinking though. I think that's funny. You have a black, oh, so I bought those paints from Michaels, I think, Brittany. I would check that out if you're interested. Bommy's here, what's up? You're welcome. Ah, okay, okay. Get your boyfriend to bring it over. Go get some, again, they, they sell them big, big jugs too. The uh, black light paints. Kim, thank you, this is a lot of fun. I'm glad you had fun, Kim. You can check out the ending. Of course, uh, I'll be posting this up right after it's done. So you can check out the ending if you missed anything, but maybe you completed it on your own. Again, I kept saying, I feel like this one, you can really kind of use the techniques I gave you and just kind of go on your own pace and do your own thing. So I hope you had a good time. Well, you did, this is a lot of fun. You're very welcome, Kim. I've been playing, painting so much these five months that I don't have anywhere to store my paintings. I started giving away his birthday gifts. Yeah, Rosie. Yes, and I've heard that from a few people now that I did my free giveaway. Some of them are saying, oh, I do have some extra pings and I want to pat, like, pay it forward in a way. So that's been extra special to hear too, that people are uh, inspired by that giveaway and they're all just uh, giving away some of their art too. I think it's cool, Rosie, to keep a few pieces, of course, or at least take photos of them so you have memories of them because I think it's cool to show progress. But definitely, I'm not going to say no to giving them away as birthday presents. I think that'll be extra special. He looks hungry, he does, James. Oh my gosh. I know it's true, Lynn. We're all set for years, years of gifts. <laughs> Great idea. People probably love that. It's true. It's it's extra special, I think, to have something hand painted, and especially if the subject matter is like relevant to the person. Oh, I know you like lions, or like you went to this vacation spot last year. I painted you the Eiffel Tower. Things like that. I think they're extra, extra, extra special. Put some mascara on his lashes. We totally could. We could pretty him up. I'm gonna get to uh, the dark purple now just to get that out and then it's just white to go, okay? So you can keep using the same brush if you wish. If you'd rather switch back to medium, that's okay, but we're gonna be doing some thin lines and small dots. So I'd recommend the teeny brush here. Lots of red and blue. I don't know why I said lots of red. We just need red and blue. <laughs> Even amounts, whatever purple shade you want, you can switch it up with more red or more blue. The point is we don't need a lot of it. Sorry, I don't know why I said lots of it because we really don't need a lot here. It's just a little bit of dark purple. It's getting late. So just to review here, we're just looking at the mouse. So very thin purple line kind of coming down and then we're just sketching out what we did before. The only other spot is uh, these little freckles. You can even add some up here. That might be, yeah, I was thinking that was blue. It could be purple too. If you wanted to add a little extra for shading, you could, but I kind of like the blue just the way it is. So I'll leave that one up to you, but more so I'm looking at this mouth here. So blue, red, doing a nice thin line coming down from the nose. Again, I kind of sketch it on. So even though it looks like a solid line, I'm kind of going line, 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 line all together. And then bring this out this way. And this one out that way. That darkens it right up, really makes it pop out. Otherwise, again, I do my little freckles here, just my little dots in preparation for my whiskers, which will go on either side. You can see below the nose, right and left hand side. Oh, those are so off kilter. <laughs> couple more there, a couple more down here. There we go, even those out. Looking from the side, it's a, it's a challenge. I keep saying it. Okay, quick minute and then we just have the white to go and that'll be all. Do -do -do. 
Oh, wow, that really changes him the eyes. Yes, Kathy. I think any of the dark parts, again, kind of clean him up. Um, and again, that's why I keep saying, like, give yourself a chance to keep going, keep going, keep going, because uh, it's those dark parts that really, really change it up for sure. Uh, Barbara, mine is quite scary looking. I think mine's kind of scary too. He's like scarier than this guy. I don't know what it is, but he's a little scarier. It might be, you, you'll see the last step I'm about to do it is adding some white. So it might pale him up a bit and make him look a little bit softer, I guess. But I think it's almost that he's brighter and darker in this one. So you'll see, maybe the next step Barbara will help you as well. My daughter's getting sleepy, but wants to finish. Oh, we're on the last step, Becky. No worries. I totally understand. I went, uh, yeah, 20 minutes over my usual two hours, but we're, we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. Do, 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 do. Linda, I'm glad you love it. Julesy, I'd believe it. <laughs> I've heard many people saying they're well over 100 now. That's pretty crazy, but I totally believe it. And I'm glad you're enjoying it that much. Yeah, it's true, James. Uh, at the very start of COVID, people were painting on cardboard and rocks and anything they could find because a lot of the stores were shut down, right? Mmm, Kathy, that would be fun. <laughs> Sorry, I saw 15, not 115. <laughs> 115. <laughs> All right, so I just want to go through the white with everybody. You can go at your own pace with it, of course, add as much or as little as you want. But all I'll say is the white can be used really anywhere you wish. Um, I wouldn't put the white on everywhere, but it can be used everywhere if you need it. I would just focus on the lighter parts of your painting and the gaps of your painting. So if you have any big gaps, you can use the white to add some texture on top. So even though this looks plain white, it is white brushstrokes. Maybe you see some of them there. It helps just, again, make it look complete rather than having blank canvas. And then white also helps with the, like I said, lightening things up. So if when we added some darker colors here, you can see a big difference here, how dark and light um, these two are. You can add white on top of anything to make it lighter. So I know for a fact, you can see here, I added white kind of along the edges here. It really softened up those edges. Up here, it looks like, it looks like on the forehead, I used a lot just to keep that area light. And the great thing about the white is it's not gonna turn it pure white. Um, it shouldn't anyway it'll be kind of transparent. So you might get some brighter strokes, but for the most part, when the white dries, you'll kind of see through it. So it's almost like you're just kind of paling up any colors that you're applying uh, the white onto. As long as you're not blobbing it on, you're just kind of using small amounts of white, stroking it on, it will become transparent at the end and it'll help uh, make these colors look just softer in general. So it's kind of like you're going back a step a little bit, but I don't know, I think it's a necessary one. So I'm gonna do it on mine here. And like I said, you can really take your time, do this as much or as little as you need. It's gonna vary for everybody. It's really just a final step to fill in spaces to lighten things up. So for example, yeah, I don't want any up here, but I want some in here. I think it got a little dark in the uh, forehead area. So I'm just gonna plop some on like this. So this is filling in gaps. It might mix a little bit, of course, if paint is still wet. I saw my yellow was still a little wet, but like I said before, that's not always bad. It might just give you a nice, very pale version of whatever color you're touching into. So I would try embracing it. And if it's getting a little muddy, just wipe off your brush, grab a little more white and avoid the wet area. Hopefully you saw a big difference there. Now that I've added white, it just lightened up the full, whole forehead, gave it a nice little bright spot but you still have color there. It's not like you're covering it with white, right? You're giving more of a uh, transparent effect. I come down the nose a little. It's just like the background, right? Remember that? It's not like pure white on top. It's just kind of a transparent addition to what you have. I'm going down my nose a bit. I think it's a little dark right now. So I'll just stroke a little bit there. Looks like my eyes have gaps. So this is filling in gaps here. Where else? I have a lot of gaps, it looks like, in my chin and under my nose, so I'll just stroke those on. Trying to avoid my freckles, of course. If you overlap a little, that's okay. You can always re-add them. Go up here, there's just gaps up here. 
it is lightening up and I could do this a lot more if I wanted. Like I could even split up some parts in here if I wanted, but I just don't want to overwhelm this too much. Uh, the only key area I would say I add the white is in the eyes. I like to especially add just a small little stroke or dollop of white right on top of the light green. It gives a little glint to the eyes. Do you see that? There's just a tiny little white, I'll add a tiny bit over there. Just gives a little extra sheen. So that was just a small little brush stroke or a small little tap of your brush. Gives a little bit of glossiness to the eyes. If you want a wet nose, put a little white on the nose. There's so many options. You can just play around and again, this is the great thing about acrylics. If you add something you don't like, you can go right on top with another color after. So experiment as you like. I think you'll have fun with it, especially this white. It's 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 hard to go wrong with the white because again, it just lays on top. You can put more color on top if you don't like it. Gaps and lighter spaces. That's what you're looking for. Okay. But otherwise, that is technically the last step. So like I said, I could play with this all night probably. And I really did with this one. I played a lot with it and re-added some colors here and there, shaped it up a little bit more. Oh, that's wrong. I want to do my whiskers. There's one more thing. We had whiskers. Oopsie. So if you want some white whiskers, just to make sure we got that, just quick little lines coming out from the freckles, okay? Just using the tip of my brush, I'm using the medium round, just flicking outwards with the tip. Flick, flick, flick a couple times, nice and big. There we go. Now he's all whiskered up. Sorry, that was, that was seriously the last step. Okay. So yeah, like I said, you can always go go ahead and keep playing with it. If you need it to dry, maybe that's a good idea too, just to let it, let it dry and then uh, have more of a clean go at it rather than worrying about what paints are wet and which ones are dry. But if you think you're all done, sign your painting. Boink. There we go. I just did some little initials in the bottom corner. You can sign however you like. But I find that kind of like finishes the painting off. It tells yourself I'm done. I'm not going to touch it anymore because sometimes you need that reminder not to touch it <laughs> or else you'll keep touching it forever. So that's my recommendation. Okay. Robin says, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So I'll do my little closing spiel. And then what I'll do is I'll keep looking through the comments to, uh, to help uh, with any questions or just to answer any questions that are going on here. Um, so yes, thanks for coming everybody. Again, the turnout for this event was amazing. I'm very excited about the numbers today, especially on Twitch. If I didn't, uh, you know, just to be honest, viewership on Twitch, very important. It's very important. Um, the fact that we were over a hundred was huge. Um, that means that we were probably close to the top of the art category today, which is pretty amazing. Um, I don't want to say that for a fact, but I've been watching numbers and that's about the, the milestone is a hundred. So thank you so much for those who switched over to Twitch. I know, um, it was more so just cause Facebook wasn't working, but you, you really don't know how much that helped me today. So thank you very, very much for that. Uh, and the viewers on Facebook, of course, I thank you as well for tuning in as usual. All of you all together are all wonderful. You're all very nice to paint with today. And I hope I can answer any last minute questions that any of you have. Um, if you'd like to post your final version of your paintings, I would love to see them. I love seeing the final versions and everyone else does too. It kind of gives you a perspective of how many people painted tonight all together. It's a very cool like group feeling. So if you're on Facebook today, you can go to the Facebook event page. So probably the event page that you saw on RSVP too. So it's in the events tab on my Facebook page. You can go check that out and uh, post there right after this video ends. I need to open up permissions. It'll tell you you're not permitted to post. That'll change in about 10 minutes, okay? Uh, if you're on Twitch and you prefer Discord, I also have a Discord, I'll just pop that in there. You can post it in the Discord channel. There's an art share channel that I have within my community. So feel free to check that out. Jadro, thanks for the follow. Sorry, I missed you 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, what else here? Uh, this event was completely free. All of these tutorials will be completely free. I know people keep asking if I'll charge for them. Nope, no plans to. It's going to be free as always. Um, people keep asking me, continue to ask me about tips. Uh, yes, I accept tips. Thank you. If you'd like to support me for these free painting events, uh, I have an email uh, e-transfer, I guess. I'm talking about Facebook here, e-transfer. You can e-transfer your money if you'd like, um, or you can support me on PayPal. I have a PayPal option as well. Uh, Twitch, there are lots of donation links as well. Um, but again, the whole point of this is that it's free so that everyone can 
can attend. So if you're unable to tip, I totally understand. I don't take names. <laughs> it's not, I'm not looking at names who's tipping or not. So thank you for those who support me today. And if not, I totally understand. I'm just happy that you're coming and I'm happy that you're painting and having a good time. So as long as that keeps happening, that's what I'm going to keep doing. Uh, if you're looking for the recording of this, this will be on YouTube uh, within a few days. If you want it immediately, it'll stay on Facebook and on Twitch for the time being. And then once it's disappeared from there, it just goes to YouTube. So again, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. And next tutorial, if you want to join me for another step-by-step -step tutorial, this is what's being painted next. This is on Friday. Nice Mount Fuji cherry blossom painting. All my favorite colors in it, blues, purples, pinks. So you can check out uh, Friday, 8 p.m. EST, both on Twitch and Facebook once again, always. Okay, so I'm just gonna look through comments now and see if anyone has any questions. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Robin, thank you, you're welcome. Becky, you're welcome, and you're welcome. Renee, you're welcome. Uh, and Twitch didn't work well for me. That's okay, Anne. Yeah, whatever we're working is working well for you. I saw majority say Twitch was working, but either one works. Whatever you're comfortable with, whatever's working on your end, I'm happy with. Thanks for coming, Anne. Sue, you're welcome. And Ju, can you please find out why you are freezing? It's Facebook. It's I'm pretty sure it's Facebook, Anju. I'm so sorry. It's uh, because I'm using the same internet connection, same computer, everything, and Twitch is totally fine. So I really, truly think it's Facebook. And I've I've heard confirmations from other viewers that um, Facebook has been problematic as of late. So not just with me, but with everybody. No, I'm not even using my new computer. It, I know there's a, I haven't even set up my PC yet, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm still using the old computer. It's the same setup I've been using for the last few months. So I'm really not, I really think it is just a problem with Facebook. They've been problematic for the past week or two at least. So I think that's it, but I'm really sorry if it's still causing issues. Uh, Cheryl, is this lion painting available after the live stream? Yes, it'll be all available immediately. It'll be available uh, probably in about 10 minutes. Oh, you got it. You got it. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Lisa, join late. Can't wait to try this. I can't wait for you to try it. You're welcome, Bev. Uh, who else here? Thank you. You're welcome, Vicky. And then... Where else here? What should my painting be next? Oh, clouds are horror. You want to join me in my cloud journey, Brittany? Everyone's saying clouds. <laughs> oh, we got one horror. Uh, it is purple, Lydia. Purple. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Brittany. Yes, purple. Everyone answered. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm so glad, Mish. I think the next few coming up are really great, too. I'm excited. You're welcome, Kays. Have a great night. Nice, nice, nice. Kitty's every day continues. Excellent, Bommy. I can't wait. Freckles, uh, Raffman. Yeah, it was just the dark purple. And I was just dotting it on with a the small round brush. So just literally doing dot, 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 dot. In terms of placement, they stick to the outsides of this lower cheek area. What would you, maybe the upper lip area? I think that would be more appropriate to say. And I would say like five to 10 on each side. Yeah, just taking the brush and literally tapping it on and off like that. Let me know if you need more help. Um, I didn't do any black around the eyes. There's actually no black. Oh, you know what? There's no black in this painting. Sorry, guys. I did say black would be used just in my color ordered thing. I did red, yellow, blue, black, white. There's no black technically. Sorry, I should have thought about that a little earlier, but I didn't. <laughs> just green, just green. It's all dark greens around the eyes. Uh, you're welcome, Lynn, of course. I signed it, yeah. <laughs> of course, Grokey. Sorry if I missed. I know a lot of messages have come in since then, but uh, have a great sleep. Uh, ch -ch -ch Sweden. Jesus, a sweet Swede. You're welcome, Lori. It's AM for her. <laughs> I'll bomb you. Oh, never mind. Do you know where I was just out of curiosity? I'm curious. It's on record. Oh, wow. That may be recommended for you, though. I'm not sure. Anyway, still very exciting nonetheless. <laughs> Lisa. You're all staying up so late. I appreciate it. Uh, to the white. I did, yeah, I did use medium round brush to do the white. Yes, you could use either, but I found it beneficial to keep with the same brush strokes as everything else. Yes, so the medium round. You're welcome, Lynn Messi. I don't know how to, oh, you're welcome? Uh. 
two, two. Oh no, I don't know. I failed French. No. <laughs> uh, yep, medium round. Good. You're welcome, Charlene. I'm glad you had fun. Have a great night. See you Friday. Take care. You're welcome, Kathy. Excellent, Lori. Thanks for hanging out, Lori. Despite not painting it, you can enjoy tomorrow. Lydia, me too. It's my new therapy. It's always been my therapy. Welcome in. <laughs> Taking names and numbers right for the tips, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, excited for Friday. Excellent. Right now? James, I'll pop in. I'll, uh, I need to shut this down and download the video, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in if you guys want help. Yeah, cherry blossoms gonna be great. I'm so sorry. I still don't know why I say sorry a different way. I don't know. It's always been my therapy anyway. To dumb it. Oh, okay. Tuesday, Tuesday, I'll work on it. I swear, I swear, I swear. Thank you so much for the stream. You're welcome, Lisa. It's been a pleasure. You too, Lisa. Thank you so much for staying up and uh, following along. And you're welcome, Lynn. Clouds didn't mean to send that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, you're talking about your cloud idea. <laughs> Join me in my cloud adventure. That's amazing, Bommy. Thank you for confirming. That's uh, that's huge for me. Bienvenue. That's your welcome. Huh? I had no idea. That sounds like such a basic thing I should know, and I didn't. <laughs> Bienvenue. Huh? Okay. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. You're welcome, Rosie. This is the first time uh, on Stick and my first time following on Twitter. On Twitch, maybe. <laughs> on Stick, I think, on Twitch. But I'm so glad you had a good time, especially for your first time following a tutorial. Amazing. I'm glad you had a great time. And again, for those who popped on Twitch today, if you followed me, you'll get notified now every time I go live. You're welcome to turn off those notifications if you think they're kind of like spammy emails. I totally get it. Um, because you guys know when I'm online based on my schedule anyway, but if you'd like to know when I'm online just to pop in and say hi or just see what I'm doing, you can now do that, so that's great. Okay, bienvenue is welcome. All right. Cool. Thanks, Bommy. Huh. Okay, Anju. Weird. I'll uh, I'll try researching it. Yeah. I. Uh, it's just based on what everyone else is telling me that they all said Facebook was bad for multiple things. But if you were just watching another live video, I'm gonna check into it for sure. Thank you for letting me know. Yes, Vicky. And if you want to send me any photos, please do, and I can help you. Yes, Jennifer, I know me too. I found, I saw a few people find me today, so it was very nice to hear. Glad you're back. Lynn, you're welcome. Can't wait to see the rest of the series. Yeah, I'm gonna work on this, guys. It sounds like a lot of you are very interested, and I heard a lot of cool ideas for animals, so... We're not gonna do an animal every week, but, you know, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. And again, I kind of like the idea of doing different color schemes, so... Look out for that. It'll be neat. Uh, Lisa sent you a picture. Excellent. I'll check it out. Uh, when you're doing the white, do I only put it where I need to fill? Pretty much, Lydia. Yes, the white is kind of up to you. And I had two recommendations. Put the white where you need to lighten up a spot. So if anything looks a little dark compared to what you want it to be, just put some white on top. So I was putting it... Yeah, mine, got, mine looks scary too a little bit. I think my eyes are too close together. Anyway, uh, I lightened up the forehead here with white. And then I also recommended using it to fill in gaps. So if you have any gaps left over, just using a little bit of white will help with that. Um, even though it seems redundant, you're putting white on a white canvas, it still adds a little bit of texture and helps cover it up with the paint. So I'd recommend doing those two things. Anything that needs lightening, anything that needs gap filling. Yeah. Guess about time to get up now. <laughs> what are your free paints? Uh, Oh, free paint. So free paint is just a, I should change the name of that. If anyone has a different idea for a name instead of free paint, let me know. But it just means I'm painting freely. <laughs> um, it's not like a free event, like monetization wise. It's like, it means I could do anything. You'll, you'll tune in. I'll probably be painting. I will be painting, but it'll be like a free, free reign of what's going on. Cause I never really decide what I'm doing until like either before stream or right when I'm on stream. Again, most people in the chat can back me up on that. Sometimes I turn on the camera, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing today. And then we all decide what I'm painting and what medium I'm using, using and whatever. So that's what I mean by free paints. I will join you in your cloud journey. I think I'll do horror myself because I do, do that. And then clouds with you. Excellent. 
And then do I cover white over all colors? Uh, Lydia, I would stick to just your lighter areas. You don't need to put white everywhere. So uh, like up here, I liked it nice and dark. So I didn't put any extra white. It was more so like the forehead. I did like the outside of the mane here, um, kind of in here as well. So yeah, really wherever you think it's needed just to lighten up areas. Free range paint, yeah. I don't know if I should literally call it that, but if anyone has a different idea for something a little more clear, because I know free paint, people are probably like, oh, a free painting session. And it is free, but like, it's not me teaching. It's uh, it's just me painting and it's, it's, again, a different vibe. It's like, you're just watching as I paint. I talk about what I'm doing. I'm happy to answer questions at the same time, but it's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's a free painting, <laughs> free, free range of paint. Yeah. <laughs> And again, I might be doing oil paints. I might be doing some other, you know, slightly different medium, probably painting wise, but could be different. So yeah, that's what it is. Uh, no, maybe not. It sounds like you're doing chicken painting. <laughs> that's what I thought too. Free range painting, like free range chickens. <laughs> yeah. Casual art. Yeah, something like that. Like free time. That's why I, I call it free paint as if it's like free time, you know? But yeah, I think I need a better name for it. Christy, I just signed up for Twitch after the painting was done. Twitch quality is way better. Cool, this is my favorite painting so far. Oh, you're so welcome, Christy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yeah, if you're enjoying Twitch, uh, feel free to think about switching over. It's it's the same concept. It's free, you made an account very quickly, clearly, and uh, if it's better quality, then all the power to you. Freestyle painting, that's that's maybe a good one. That was Linda, yeah? Yeah, I, I'll consider freestyle painting because I, I, I write free painting on my schedule and I understand that it might be confusing. Sue, thanks, love the style. Hope you do more. Facebook was fine for me, Niner. Excellent, I'm glad it was working for you, Sue. Um, and yeah, I will do more of the style. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. You were all very excited about the style. I'll keep doing it. Uh, Borboletta, thank you. I love painting with you tonight. You're welcome. I'm glad you had a good time. You're welcome, Becky. Uh, Jennifer, don't love the blue colors I use. Do you recommend waiting until all uh, is dry to change the colors? Yes, for the most part, especially if it's like darker blues that you're looking at. If it's lighter blues, uh, first of all, they're probably dry, but second of all, a lot easier to kind of mold around with them depending on what color you're putting on. Um, blue opposite is orange. So as long as you don't stack orange on top of wet blue, you should be good. However, if you're trying to cover up a dark blue, I would recommend waiting till it's dry. Depending on how thick your paint is, it could probably be as little as like five to 10 minutes. It could be maybe more like 20, depending on how thick it is, but relatively quick either way. Acrylic paints are great that way. It's pretty quick. Excuse me, pretty quick drying. Uh, and it's fun to see you with uh, free time. Yeah, right, Lynn? Like it's, uh, it's technically like on camera time, but for me, it's free time. It's relaxed time. I'm often the most stressed before the stream. I'm like running around, setting things up, blah, blah, blah. But the second I turn on the camera and I start talking to people, it's like, Yes, the, these are my people. This is my place. <laughs> so it's really great for me, honestly. Uh, X Games mode painting, <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> X Games? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I should call my free painting? <laughs> Painting time with Aaron Bun paints. Yeah, painting time, I don't know, something like that. Freestyle painting. Like, oh, you're talking about X Games freestyle. You know, you don't know the meme. I guess I don't. I'm trying to connect it to freestyle. I don't know the meme. No, if it's a meme, I don't know it. I'm not, I, th I thought I was in the meme culture, but I'm not. I think in the cloud series, you should add a sunset vibe. Oh, yep, you're on my level. Brittany, I think you know exactly what I wanna do. Cause you've mentioned a few things now that like, I'm, yeah. Big plans, big plans, it's gonna be good. Yeah, I want like orangey clouds, pinky ones, just all different, you'll see, hopefully. <laughs> I keep making these promises and then I'm like, <laughs> all of you are like, when's your PC built? Anyway, okay, I'm gonna sign off of Facebook now um, just to end the video so that those who are waiting can view it. Uh, thanks again so much for coming guys. Again, Friday is the next tutorial if you're interested, okay? And otherwise this will be on YouTube in a few days and Facebook instantly when I end this off in a couple seconds, okay? Have a fantastic evening, Facebook. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>